Good evening and welcome to the first episode of Apotheosis, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition homebrew campaign. I am your host and game master, Mick Holmes, and joining me tonight, uh, let's go left from left to right. Uh, Sean, introduce Still yourself, left. please. Yeah, uh, name is Sean, playing a character whose nom de guerre is Grey Song of Alaneth, a uh, wild shaped druid. So, uh, excuse the crappy accent, at least until I get into the groove of things. So, uh, we have Eric Chance. Hello, yes, I will be playing Zachris the Strong, who is a lizard man, uh, gladiator, uh, slash ranger. Perfect, we've got uh, Aaron. I'll be playing Chauncey Hockenstone, the, uh, I guess, medical officer of the group. <laughs> He's a rogue. Um, normally, we would have uh, Eric Romo playing here, but they are uh, terribly sick because they just did a 75-hour work week. And, uh, well, I will be playing uh, Luntium Kronari, who is a half-orc priest. I believe I, uh, I angelic sorcerer actually uh, an emissary from their uh, emissary religious group uh, <laughs> notes I totally have in front of me uh, and finally we have uh, Rich hello hello people of the material plane <laughs> fellow players Mick thanks for having me I am Rich G Janak and I am playing LK Fornath the gnomish wizard excellent uh, tonight, we are sponsored in part by Roll20 Spotlights. Uh, check out Roll20 at Roll20.net. Uh, we have uh, some special artists working for us. We have uh, maps donated by Gabriel Pickard and David Hemingway. We have Tokyo Tokens by Elcio Trombini. Uh, portraits by, well, me and Sean. Uh, as well as music from Will Savino, Alexander Nekarada, and Otis Galloway. Uh, I am... 900% sure that I have fucked up somebody's names, uh, so I apologize. Um, I think it is time for us to begin. Uh, uh, I'm going to get much better at doing this, uh, but I have titles and stuff. We begin in the uh, Menagerie, a traveling circus of repulsive, monstrous sideshows, vicious blood sports, and unethical at best magic spectacles. It is run by elven crime lords. Uh, the menagerie caters to the lowest and seediest underbellies of society. Officially, no one who works there is a slave, but most people who work there know that the elf lords have ways to find those who leave. Like it or not, you guys work there. Uh, today, you have been gathered in a dank side tent smelling of blood and booze by your personal overseer, Hako Yelkur. Uh, why don't we go from left to right again and describe yourselves uh, and why you are at the Menagerie. Uh, Graysong, what do you look like? Graysong is an arctic elf, so he is um, pale-skinned, uh, pale-haired, uh, has uh, green, slightly luminescent eyes, as you can see in the portrait. Um, he is generally cowled um, most of the time, has a wolf necklace about his neck, uh, has, um, though most of his body is obscured, has uh, any, if you spend any time interacting with him, you can see he has some sort of uh, almost plant-like looking growth that has gone up his neck and sort of into his face. Um, not very uh, verbose in terms of speech, but uh, but but well spoken. Um, yeah. Uh, perfect. So, uh, what brings you to the menagerie? Uh, so, Gray Song. Um, he he, uh, he. As I mentioned, he's an Arctic elf. Uh, his family was was captured and some of his tribe mates killed. Uh, he managed to uh, make a a deal with a an entity that is TBD, um, and uh, was granted powers to be able to track down uh, and release his family. And caught wind uh, through some interrogation of the folks responsible that he should come here. His patron encouraged him to do so. 
uh, to further ends that she has not fully revealed. Uh, yes. He is now beholden to her, and uh, through virtue of the pact that he created with her, uh, and so he has 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 gone forth as he has been instructed. Yes, he has. I have instructed you well. <laughs> uh, we have um, Zachris standing next to Graysong. Uh, Zachris, what do you look like? So Zachris is a, a tall, <clears throat> young, but very strong uh, lizard folk. Um, he is, as you can tell, is, is bluish in uh, coloration. However, he is an unseen lizard folk and uh, un kind of unknown to him. He was captured uh, as a fairly young hatchling, um, only about probably seven or eight. And so while he, he remembers a, a little bit of his heritage, he's, uh, he's lived more time here in the menagerie, uh, being trained as a gladiator. Uh, so he, uh, this is kind of his his new family. However, um, he he still yearns to to kind of find his ancestry, his, you know, his his folks. Uh, he's a, a gentle giant. Um, he's uh, slow to act, um, and uh, he, he's um, yeah, he's he's still kind of learning because he's he is quite young for a lizard folk. He's he's only yeah, about fifteen. Okay. Uh... How fast do lizard folk age? I guess uh, approximately human. They, they age roughly the same as, as uh, humans do. Although around this age is when they kind of uh, it's considered their adulthood. Okay. So at this at this age, he's he is considered an adult for a lizard folk, although a young adult. A young adult. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have uh, the Chauncey Hawkinstone. Uh, oh, that was a terrible attempt at your accent. That was good enough. Um, yeah, so Chauncey, he's human. Uh, his red hair, very wild. Um, he is very skinny, definitely not muscular, um, almost on the malnourished side. He always has a bunch of bandoliers all over him uh, with tools pretty much for every occasion. Um, and very large, like, cargo pants covered in pockets as well. And big, fluffy, pink bunny slippers that tend to just kind of hang off his toes when he walks. Um, he was part of the upper echelon with, like, nobility as he was training to be a medical professional, like a doctor. Um, nothing to do with actual medical or um, <laughs> magical healing. But... Uh, <laughs> Due to a bunch of circumstances, he was not uh, cut out for that kind of life, and uh, he was shunned. So now he just goes around helping who he can. Um, as part of being in the menagerie, he's probably not welcome there, <laughs> as he always just kind of sneaks in and then gets thrown out, and sneaks in and gets thrown out, and he's always just trying to help out whoever's in there. You're one of the few people that the menagerie actually uh, doesn't want to work for them. You're anti-slaved. Anti-press ganged. Um, we have uh, Krenari, uh, who is not here right now. Uh, Krenari is a uh, half-orc. Uh, they are quite urbane, uh, unlike most half-orcs. They're quite well-dressed. Uh, they wear a badge of a uh, holy company on their chest and um, acts as a emissary for uh, the... I have to open a different screen and find the names, but uh, for essentially a secular group that um, proposes that uh, perhaps the gods should not be followed. Uh, instead, they should be um, treated as any other human, any other equal. Uh, they work for the Menagerie as a... They are trained with speaking with more of the monstrous uh, types of creatures. Orcs and goblins, trolls, those kinds of creatures um, who are sort of marginalized in, you know, nicer society. Um, they're trained at talking with them and uh, wants to spread their uh, religion, so to speak. 
uh, to them. Um, they have uh, a grayish skin tone um, and uh, tattoos going from back of the neck up to the top of their head, um, which uh, denote a um, uh, uh, their ranking. Uh, um, I think that's all the stuff I've got. Uh, next session, I am sure that uh, Eric Roma will be able to tell us better about what uh, Kunari looks like. Um, and uh, last but not least, we have uh, LK. Uh oh, can't hear you, Rich. Sorry, I was muted by yep. virtue of not wanting to share my Doritos with everybody. <laughs> um, so yes, LK is a uh, a fae, uh, fae touched gnome, um, and so kind of has had a uh, a latent kind of amount of magic at his fingertips for most of his life. Fairly mundane, uh, not really put to any adventuring use. Um, he comes from a scholarly background uh, and is kind of very much formally trained uh, toward diplomatic ends uh, at his father's behest. Um, and has since left that life uh, as a result of uh, some loss in his family and a, a kind of burning desire for answers about how that loss might have occurred uh, or what he might do to set that right. Um, in terms of how he looks, he's, he's kind of a diminutive little gnome, uh, as most are. Um, he is probably doubly so by dint of being a scholar uh, by his nature, and so uh, very much represents that, you know, Enlightenment era scholarly body rather than uh, new new fandangled versions of scholars. Um, and so LK is uh, on his, uh, his way to becoming a wizard and is... Uh, doing so by kind of absorbing some of the latent uh, spellcraft he sees around him as they move town to town in the menagerie. Uh, his place in the menagerie, by and large, is one of uh, kind of servitude um, uh, in, in the name of paying off a debt. So um, he, uh, leaving home for the first time, not being very well equipped due to a, a relatively academic and isolated lifestyle, um, you know, was not... Uh, uh, very good uh, at making his own way, spent his money quite quickly, and and ended up st uh, maybe making an attempt at stealing uh, that was from the menagerie, and the menagerie simply gave him the option of losing his hands or uh, doing some work to pay it off. And so he's been there doing exactly that, collecting arcane knowledge uh, across the uh, that time. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, the five of you find yourself oh. in this... Oh, something else? Sure. Um... And LK travels around with his familiar Harvey. I should introduce Harvey, uh, his uh, his rabbit, uh, who will nice. be with us for the duration of the the planar campaign. I don't see him. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What? Who are you calling? I I I'm not I'm I'm not picking fan. him up. Sorry, it's a bad joke. Uh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> He's the only one that got the Harvey reference. Mm -hmm. I. So. <laughs> uh, before we get going, I just want to say that this art, yeah, spot on. Aw, yep. thank you. Good job, Mick. Yeah. I and everybody really watching Mick's the one that actually painted these up. Well, uh, Sean helped with a lot of it. Now I helped with one, and one to be determined, but um, yeah. it's mostly you. I mean, Chauncey's character looks like he would absolutely be played by a younger um, uh, Tim Curry. <laughs> and that was completely accidental. I actually like built his face using reference from a whole bunch of different faces, and it just—it turns out that's what Tim Curry looks like. A whole bunch of different faces put together. Uh, so you guys are um, in a—you've uh, uh, been gathered in a dank side tent. Uh, it smells of blood and booze, and uh, you've been brought here by the personal overseer uh, of you four, um, not including. Uh, uh, Chauncey, though I imagine seeing the other four come by, Chauncey would just sort of follow. I just want to be included. Uh, so Hako uh, is a rough-looking, barrel-chested man. Uh, impressive mutton chops, a surly temper. Um, what would diplomatically be called an interesting odor? Um, he's a goon for the Menagerie Lords, uh, but unfortunately still ranks higher than you guys. Uh, as he gathers you in his tent... Uh, you see an uncharacteristically worried look on his face. Um, he gathers you in the corner and says, uh, uh, we've got some, uh, got some new talent joining us today. An elf named Fenlisel. He'll be performing with the crowd. For the crowd. Some kind of new ritual magic he's, uh, got drum up. 
uh, he's gonna be showing up with the crowd, so you're gonna have to do exactly what he says the moment he gets here, because you guys are his assistants. LK, Venasil oh. will be giving you direct orders. He wants some help with his magic thing, so brush up on your uh, finger waggling before it starts, eh? Oh god, I'm switching from <laughs> Cockney into Canadian. <laughs> Uh, Elke, do you... Well, I suppose I've got some downtime. I can't say that I'm thrilled to take my eyes off my own research, but magic, you say. What's the nature of his experiments? Well, he'll tell you that when he gets here. Oh. Kadari, I want you to greet the nobles as they enter. Uh, their nobles are going to be watching this. Um, they've been invited just by Fenrisil. Um, remind them that the menagerie <clears throat> depends on patrons like them. Butter him up. Uh, use that toothy charm you got. Once that's done, do whatever Fenlisil wants. Zachris, you're the muscle. You gotta be do ready to do what Fenlisil needs. Move equipment. Oh god, I hate your voice. Listen, the younger toothy. noble. Sorry. Uh, he will give a toothy smile. <laughs> As the younger nobles can get pretty unruly. Uh, for bright, if a fight breaks out, it's your job to stop it. Zachary's can break it. God, you're weird. Great song. You do the same as Zachary's. Uh, but also, keep a keen eye to the crowds, eh? Uh, we've had sneak thieves break in for the nobles. Um, so once the ritual's done, make sure you report anyone suspicious directly to me. As you wish. That's right. Everything I wish. And I'm don't glaring you worry at him as he says that. it. Don't you worry about driving up uh, customers or patronage. I'll use my live sexy boy and attract all the wealthiest out there. Ah, oh, Chauncey. Chauncey, Chauncey. Ah, oh, just stay nearby in case this goes tits up and we need a medic. Just don't get in Fenless's way and don't talk to anyone, you crazy bastard. All right, I gotta go out to uh, get Fenlisil. I'll bring him in here. You'll have about two minutes to talk to him. Until then, do whatever the fuck you guys want. And he goes and waddle waddles off, uh, leaving the five of you in this tent. All right, just don't try saying anything bad about this, because he said he was an elf and knife ears. He can hear you for miles around. That is systematically untrue. That's just what you want us to think. I'm on the you. <laughs> Does anybody know anything about this Fenrisil? Zachris never heard of him. Uh, Nantium Kunari. Uh, Kunari also has never heard of him. The name suggests he is not of my people. Um, a few seconds later, uh, Hako brings in a tall elf. Uh, graying blonde hair, wearing a fancy, long burgundy overcoat, uh, like some kind of circus showman. Um, his face, however, looks much more like a pissed-off royal than an entertainer. Um, I might have gone a little overboard making this guy look evil. He's not meant to look <laughs> that evil. Very menacing. Um, I'll try to outglare him. <laughs> that's like a Freudian slip. He is the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, uh, he speaks to you guys. Um, Mr. Yalker has informed you of your tasks, correct? You, wizard. And hmm. points to you, okay? I need you to assist my ritual. Are you versed in the tar Tarkel paradigm? I, uh, let me think. The Tarkel paradigm. I'd like you to make me an arcana check. I shall do so. Let us see. Uh, 15. Okay, you've you've heard of it. Um, you're trained more as a universalist than a conjurist, but you do know it's a uh, conjuration, um, a sort of a, a way of channeling magic into a uh, an item. Uh, it's something you can do, but you're not exactly good at it. Well, it is a paradigm after all. No student of magic worth their salt would be unfamiliar with it, but uh, I can't say that I'm practiced in the method good well 
Regardless, I need you to prepare a tar kill conversion on my command. You will hold the crystal and merely charge it on my mark. Um, and when that happens, I'll ask you to make another arcana check. Um, he then says, You, lizard folk, move my instruments to just behind the stage. The rest of you, once my speech has started, I will need you to hold my instruments. There will be a circle in the center of the stage. Simply stand at the edge, facing the instruments inwards. Anywhere will do. And quickly, the audience is beginning to arrive. Uh, he uh, kind of turns, uh, glances once at Graysong's face, uh, looking directly at your your scar or your uh, growth. If I if I notice him looking at me intently. I'll give him sort of a half smile. He just furrowed brow, but half smiles, almost predator-like. Uh, I'd like you to actually make me a perception check right now. Okay. Uh, let's see. While he's doing that, I'm gonna lean over to Zachris and be like, "You think they want to make a little elf?" <laughs> Zachris, uh, not sure. How do they do that? Perception. Uh. 15 again. Um, yeah, you see a, a glimmer of something in his eye. Uh, you catch sort of a, um, a reflection, not of you, but of a woman. Uh, you see a reflection of a beautiful woman with horns and the eyes of a predator. In his eyes, in that moment, her face instructs you to trust this elf. My demeanor will change. <laughs> As you wish. Um, Hako uh, sort of grabs Krenari by the shoulder and pushes them forward and says, All right, quick, get to the door before I get Chauncey to greet the guests. Um, so uh, this is where I would uh, jump to Krenari. Uh, Krenari goes to the front tent to greet nobles as uh, the nobles come in. Uh, I'm going to open up Krenari's sheets, and, nope, that's not a sheet. Uh, and roll a diplomacy check. Uh, well, 15 okay. seems to okay. be the number of the night. Okay, <laughs> um, scary. all of them have been 8 plus 7. I wonder if roll 20 is broken. I'm just going to roll <laughs> another deception, or de Okay, deception okay, worked. Okay. Okay. okay, so, diplomacy. Um, <laughs> uh, Krenari greets some of the fancy nobles who are turning up their noses on the dirt floor. Uh, most of the people sort of ignore Krenari, but uh, a number of them, you know, nod to Krenari as they greet them. Um, most of the nobles are humans, uh, but one elderly elf gentleman en enters, uh, dressed to the nines with a younger human woman in a revealing blue dress on his arm. Uh, he smiles at Krenari gently, but the woman looks straight ahead, and Krenari realizes this woman's blind. Uh, the man looks at uh, Krenari's badge and says, That badge you're wearing, it's Mavarian Secular, is it not? Uh, and I've actually, I've run this conversation through with Krenari, knowing that, or with Eric, knowing that they wouldn't be here. Um, uh, so he says, uh, rare to find such people here. You must be very far from home, poor dear. What brings you to a place like the Menagerie? Uh, and uh, Krenari responds that um, it is my order's duty to the mortal races to embolden them, to help guide them in transcending the challenges of our society and the bodies that trap us. Um, the woman, uh, the blind woman smiles and goes that is a very good answer. You will have to remember that in the times to come. It is brave of you to travel so far. We should be seating. It was a pleasure meeting you, uh, Nuntius Krenari. Um, Graysong. Yes. You've been instructed to uh, help Zachris move the crates, but more importantly, to watch for the crowd. Uh, as this crowd is starting to move and flush into the seats, uh, what would you like to do? Yeah, I will, since Zachris probably, his primary duty is is moving things, I will do that, but my primary focus will be on the crowd. Okay. 
I, and I Jack think... Bush will not pay attention if, you know, uh, Grace Holmes <laughs> not lifting a thing. He's just going about his job. He's doing it all himself. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, uh, can you make me a perception check, Graysong, to uh, watch this crowd? Uh, perfect. Um, in particular, you spot uh, one noble uh, who is a young blonde man. Uh, he actually looks kind of out of place. His overcoat's too big, um, and his uh, red carnation on his lapel is, like, uh, wilted and dying. Um, he's definitely not supposed to be here, um, but... Uh, Hacko didn't ask you to apprehend him just to make a note of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I will assume that uh, as it's going forward, you're keeping an eye sort of I will. in that direction. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Zacharis, you've been asked to move some crates. Um, they're big wooden crates. Uh, they have the, the wood has big sort of slats um, or gaps in the slats in between. And there's okay. weird sharp things sticking out. Um, so I'd like you to make me an athletics check to okay. safely move the crate. Okay. Uh, what was the bonus to roll? Uh, it would be a plus zero. It's only okay. if you have like bardic inspiration or uh, something. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, twenty-two is perfect. Um, okay. you you move the crates um gently and carefully. Uh, you maybe like place one <laughs> slightly harder than the others, and uh, uh the elf um Fenrisel just sort of glares at you regardless of how good you're doing. I'll smile. I'll smile. <laughs> With teasy smile. Um, but uh, as you lower the last crate, uh, you nick yourself on a misplaced nail. Oh? Um, okay. What? Do lizard folk have different colored blood, or am I just imagining that? Uh, I would think it would be Pretty sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, you you bleed a little bit on it. Um, it's, okay. it's in a big, bright pink... Um, developer texture because they didn't know okay. what texture to color it. No, it's um, <laughs> yeah. so it's, uh, yeah. You bleed a little bit on it. Uh, okay. Chauncey, you see this. Um, I'm not going to be going to bandaging him up or anything. <laughs> I'm just be going there asking him very intrusive questions. Like, so, like, do you have, like, teeth like a shark? Did I just fall out and get replaced? Like, what's that thing you do with your scales? I've seen it change color, and I thought it was like a fever dream, but it's happened a few times when I even wasn't on, you know, my little medication. Don't tell no one. <laughs> like, exactly do your eyes cool. move weird, like those weird little chameleons? <laughs> or like, can you see past your snout? How's that? Zachary knows how Chauncey is, so he'll he'll answer him in short answers. Zacharis, not know. Zacharis, yes. Zacharis, not care. <laughs> so I picture, like, the reason he cut himself was because I was distracting him. Oh, <laughs> very likely. Um, you're able to, uh, you know, probably lick the blood off your finger, and, and it's not a bad wound. It's not even, like, a point of damage kind of thing. Um, okay. Once all of that's done, uh, the crowd starts to hush. And you see Fenris will step to the state step to the stage. Uh, he gestures for the five of you to take an instrument and go to the circle. Um, at this point, LK, uh, Harvey, I assume, is in your hat because He is, yes. Um, <laughs> where else would he be? <laughs> where else would he be? Uh, he starts to shiver a little bit and whispers to you, oh, I got a weird feeling about this. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. He seemed like he was on the up and up. What could go wrong? <laughs> Fenrisil begins his speech. Noble guests, I bid you my greetings. I humbly wish to express my deepest gratitude for your attendance here today. This is a demonstration of a project that I have been working on for some time now. I... Believe that you will not be disappointed, as you are about to witness something spectacular. Something known only to the gods. Uh, he steps forward and uh, moves his hands in arcane ways and conjures an illusory image, a ring floating in the sky, uh, with many arcane labels spreading forth. As he continues speaking, he points at various objects, rotating and shrinking his illusion with effortless gestures. Just out of curiosity, the guy that I noticed, 
can I get a read on like sort of his general demeanor? Is he nervous? Is he enraptured, enraptured by what's being said? Like, what is his general body language? Um, he's he's actually quite silent. Uh, he's sitting there with his hands on his chin, sort of like this, and he's just smiling. Mm. He's just enjoying the show, mm. and seems like he's thinking deep in thought. Mm. Um, Fenrisil uh, continues researchers, philosophers theologo- theologians most agree with the theory that our universe, our reality is not truly unique they posit a myriad of alternate universes, realities which we call the planes of existence our material plane at the center the nexus of the planes You've surely heard of stories of heroic explorers and seers peering beyond the prime material. Even the gods tell us that when we die, our souls pass on to their domains. We see the parallel planes of fey and shadow, of elemental chaos, of pure philosophical planes of thought and spirit. The current belief is that all of these planes must meet on an astral sea. But tonight, I will demonstrate that might not be the case. Uh, with a flick of the wrist, he dismisses the illusion and turns to you guys, uh, and he gives LK a nod. Uh, LK, I'd like you to make me a Arcana check. I can do that. Uh, yeah. 22, fantastic. Um, do you guys, uh, so he's asked you guys to take these, uh, instruments and stand in a circle. Uh, you can see on the stage, there is that circle. Um, the instruments themselves are these sort of silver metal cages around crystals that sort of float in the cage. Um, they have strange spokes. That crystal will try to shake it. Fenrisil will just sort of hiss at you for a second. Like, oh. um, as he continues, uh, he steps to the center of the circle. Uh, raises his arms and traces an arcane symbol in the air. Uh, the machines you're holding begin to move, the crystals slowly spinning in your hands. Uh, the hairs on the back of your necks begin to rise. Uh, Zachris, your frills start to twitch, and LK, uh, Harvey is silent but shivering in your hat. Um, okay, I think as soon as that rune goes in the air, LK uh, is going to probably try and jot that down on one of his kind of playing cards that he's fiddling with while holding the crystal and be somewhat okay. distracted. Um, so he's going to be fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> he's going to kind of look up at Harvey and be like, shh, it's going to be all right. Calm down. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, maybe make me another arcana check to see if you can multitask this. The 22 will be for, uh, you is, know, uh... keeping it held. While he's rolling that, I'd like to add that the hairs on the back of Chauncey's neck don't exist. That's the only part that he keeps meticulously groomed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, LK, you are fantastic at this. You are holding the machine and using the special, like, uh, powers that he's asked you to use. Um, this uh, Tarkel maneuver, or whatever it is, um, while writing down your cards. Um, Fender still continues. Very recently, our researchers have discovered an anomaly. Oh, an anomaly. We call them the Further Planes. A mass of entangled demiplanes fractured off from the Astral Sea, inaccessible and forgotten. A place that, until now, we had no possible contact with. No arcane magics, no animist guidance, no divine miracle could possibly flow beyond the Astral Sea. When I say that the Further Planes are known only to the gods, I may be incorrect. It is possible that even the gods themselves cannot observe these planes. With my faithful assistance here, I will show you a glimpse of these planes beyond the Astral Sea. Mr. Elke, please continue the ritual. So LK would probably continue, but uh, probably be also in so doing with his kind of multitasking. Uh, he would he would kind of be jotting down what he said and, and the things he's kind of relating, and he'd say, "Not not, not even the gods," and he would kind of leave over at him. Is that why is why is that? Uh, he doesn't respond. He just continues his speech. He's like, oh, "Right, right, right," and he keep jotting down. <laughs> um, as uh, you guys hold these crystals in the cages, you notice something. Uh, you begin to feel stiff. 
and you realize that you can no longer move your body, you can no longer speak, uh, your eyes stay focused ahead of you, and in your peripherals you see the circle on the ground spread to envelop you. You hear Venerzel's voice speaking more about arcane practices and grandiose promises, but the words begin to fade out as your vision begins to fade to white. The only thing you can see and hear correctly is three people in the audience. The blonde man with the carnation, and the old elven nobleman with the blind woman in the blue dress. The blonde man sits in the back row, looking to each of you with a mischievous glint in his eye. The elf and the woman whisper to each other, which rings in your ears. Are you certain as them? Well, some of them at least. I say you're a little prepared for this. We all were, in the beginning. After that, even your vision disappears into pure white. You begin to feel a sensation, a tug, somewhere from the center of you. It feels tight, like you're being pulled, not in a direction, but inwards. Um, then suddenly, you feel like you're hurtling, not through space, but through something else. You see flashes of light. You're being pulled through places, strange places sprouting into vision, then folding into themselves. A labyrinthine castle made of ice, a mountain rage made entirely of bone, a giant cavern of walking fungus worshipping an underground star, a massive metropolis stacking upon itself infinitely into the sky, a colorful forest of human-shaped trees lit by fairy lights, a volcanic temple with statues made of fire made solid. Then suddenly, as you're falling, you hit solid ground. I really hope you have maps ready for that, because that just pumped me up. Zachers will throw up. How about everyone goes ahead and makes me a fortitude save? <laughs> oh, I guess I did. Never mind. <laughs> uh, hey, you guys are all pretty good. Uh, LK, you are not feeling well. Uh, you're not quite, like, sickened or anything. You're just kind of... Uh, <laughs> feeling gross. <laughs> uh, and let me make one for our friend Kanari, uh, whose sheet I should keep open. And they also feel uh, kind of like shit right now. Uh, so you guys uh, find yourselves, as you regain your senses, you find yourself in uh, gloomy light. Uh, you're in a pit. Uh, as you sort of struggle to your feet, you realize that the ground isn't rock or anything. It's uh, semi-transparent. It's like a hardened pinkish goo filling the pit, uh, but going much deeper. Uh, the parts of the ooze that touched your skin is actually glowing with a slight bioluminescence. Mm. Uh, you look up at the sky, and it is just rolling black clouds and uh, sort of purpley tinged. The air is quite thick, and as you look around, you realize that you're starting to get a little short of breath. Uh, at first you thought maybe you're just winded from the fall, but the air is stale and moldy and increasingly difficult to breathe. Um, the walls of this pit go up about 30 feet, and uh, as you look closely, they are razor sharp. Uh, the they're sort of like hewn stone. Um, any kind of handholds that you could find would just slice your hands up. Hmm. Um, you... Mick, yeah. remind me, uh, sort of the the wild shape. Uh, I've got pest, I guess, form at this point in time. Yeah. I assume I could pick like a small bird or something like that that uh, I could turn into. You have to look up pest form because uh, okay. it might be like it's specific. Gotcha. Yeah, because it might be like 5e where you can't yeah, get a flying. It gives you like a weird uh, stat, but like that you kind of have to describe um, pest form, to match uh, it. Yes, pest form, uh, you transform into the battle form of a tiny animal like cat, insect, lizard, or rat. At level four, uh, spell level four, you can increase it to a flying creature. So, okay, so I can't, I can't pick a flying creature, which better. is odd because I can pick an insect. Uh... Yes. It's like an ant or a spider. Yeah, or the insect doesn't have a fly speed. Okay. 
Do I think that uh, given one of my past wild forms, like a uh, you know the the Arctic weasel or whatever, <laughs> that I could uh, that I could scamper up the walls of this and avoid some of the the sharp edges? Um, I would definitely give it a uh, advantage or advantage. This is not five e. I would give it a bonus. I'd say it would give like a, a plus three to do it because it's smaller than you know your guys's hands, um, but it's it quite slippery and sharp almost as if it's made to be <laughs> difficult to climb up all right uh i will does does someone have a rope um so i'm gonna assume with that fortitude save of lks he's gonna kind of tumble out of this portal and this thing and kind of be Whoa, and kind of hit the ground my cards and he's all his cards are gonna kind of probably be dropped by by dint of his having handled them on the way through that okay uh, and he's gonna kind of start picking them up off the ground uh and as he does he's gonna look at the ground and notice what you had described as the, the kind of oozy transparent floor yeah uh, and kind of almost stop caring about the cards and that, that is fascinating and he's gonna pick up a random card and start kind of writing on that one and then he's gonna realize harvey was tremendously scared and he's gonna, harvey harvey and he's gonna take the hat <laughs> off and, and look up there and see if he's all right is he i'm all right i'm just um you've got some presents in your hut <laughs> not again <laughs> um I will probably entreat Harvey to uh, to take a peek for us. Uh, I would be, uh, if he's not super scared or freaked out, uh, I would kind of look up uh, at these walls. And you think you could get a look up there at, at where we are? Uh, what did you give him again? You gave him... Uh... He's got flight and speech. Oh, flight and speech. Uh, so yeah, he'll, uh, like... <laughs> All right, I, I think Have I... It fly. Uh, specifically, Harvey flies with his ears. A great like or like a fluttery type deal. Big, big, like whooping, uh, floppy. Uh, I was just picturing helicopter ears. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, that might have to be a quick uh, retcon right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, he uh, helicopters his way up to the top. Um, and as he goes up, you hear him coughing. Uh, does he have saves? I don't know how um, familiar uh, work. Yes. Alright, so, so he has familiars. Click here for the full rules of familiars. Yeah, so mods, AC, save modifiers, and AC are all equal to mine before applying circumstance or status bonuses or penalties. Okay. Uh, it's perception, acro, stealth are equal to my level plus my spellcast. So what are you looking to use? Uh, I'd like him to make a fortitude save. Uh, so that is going to be equal to mine before applying circumstance or status bonus penalties. Okay, so there wouldn't be any uh, special benef benefits or bonuses, so just have you make me a roll. An LK. Fortitude? Yeah, yeah okay. fortitude. Oh. Um, he goes up about 10 feet, and then uh, sort of like, um, Elkite, I can't breathe, and then collapses into your arms. So, um, based on that description you gave us of this giant hole, are we in that like tarmac or whatever that thing is in Star Wars where Boba Fett fell into with like oh, the sharp teeth? Yeah, it's not. Sarlacc. It's not Sarlacc. moving. Um, at the very least, uh, you don't think so. Um, Chauncey hasn't seen Star Wars in a very long time, unfortunately, so he can't <laughs> really remember. Um. um but, yeah, uh, but I've been in orifices that are just as scary <laughs> as this thing. <laughs> oh boy, oh, great. it's a phrase I never expected to hear. Um, um, so, perfect. so quick question, Mick. Can I? So, if I, so having seen that, if I get closer to the the surface, is it any easier to breathe than it is standing? Only slightly. Uh, it does seem like it's stronger up at the top, but the gradient is sort of very limited. Um, but. Uh, LK, as after you catch Harvey and you're probably like trying to raise Harvey from his unconsciousness, um, you notice that the goo uh, that you were looking at, the bioluminescence, is starting to do something. Uh, the glowing portions seem to move like the lights uh, are floating towards each other. Um, and then they sort of combine in a ball much brighter than before. The ball um. starts to rise from the goo, creating this sort of pillar of goo around it. Um, 
as an aside, I am really bad at painting oozes. I tried really hard, and this is the best <laughs> I could come up with. Yeah. That is uh, sufficiently phallic, so it's yeah. going to work. I tried so hard not to make it phallic. I tried really hard. Um, this uh, this sphere stands in the center of you guys and goes, Oh, hi. I'm Glob, I think. I just made that name up. How are you? Well, that is fascinating. Oh, I I am Who, a dream. Sorry, what did you say, Jonesy? or what are you? Maybe I am in a fever dream. You all hear in this? I uh, am. He uh, sort of turns his head, like, uh, cocks it a little bit. It, like, it's not a head, obviously, but it's sort of, he bends his body <clears throat> at you, Song, and is like, I just told you, I'm Glob. Zachris will poke it without the claw. Uh, he's soft, like, silly putty. He's like, oh, neat. Invasions of my privacy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what I am. I, uh, I mean, you guys know more than I do. I can remember, um, well, three seconds. First thing I ever did in my life was say, hello, I'm Glob. Nice to meet you. Interesting. Hello, Glob. Is, is, do you know where we are? Uh, no. I don't know what anything is. Hmm. Huh. Fully expecting that this is a distraction while the Sarlacc, you know, clumps <laughs> <to digest us. laughs> So I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> like, my, is my boot, like, my little bunny slippers, are they disappearing? Is the teeth on the side, the razor sharp things closing in on us? Like, I'm ignoring it completely. <laughs> just doing, like, a <laughs> what the hell's going on? No, everything is uh, quiet and, and um, stationary. Mick, can the can the the goo be like picked up? Can it be like separated from the floor, or is it like just like a consistent uh, body can. of goo? It can be. Um, it. I mean, it sort of like looks at you as you get closer to it, and it's like, um, well, no, no, no. I mean, like the not not glob, but like the the goo that's on the the floor and oh. walls that you mentioned. Oh, the fl fluorescent. Uh, you can, but he'll say "ow." Oh, so he reacts to that. Even though it's not connected to him, or yes. is he? Well, the whole floor is is him. It's just oh. this ball that sort of rises up. Oh, gotcha. This pillar okay, is. so it's so yeah. this is this is the entirety of the goo has now uh, convalesced and did this. Yeah, and this is just a little tendril that's sticking <clears throat> up, talking to you. As an intelligence. Hmm. Uh, um, why are you guys here? That is the question I think we are all asking at this point in time, given what you just asked. Oh, neat. Where do the instruments go? They're gone, I'm sure, right? They oh, are gone, they're... yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you look around, and uh, the stuff that you had like in your backpacks, um, because for some reason you guys had backpacks, um, working packs, uh, a couple things have sort of fallen out. A number of your cards, LK, have sort of sunk beneath the ground. Uh, okay. And you realize that this uh, this goo, it's not enveloping you, but you are sinking into it unless you take a couple steps every few seconds. Yeah. Uh, the uh, air is getting really bad to you guys, and I'd like to call for another round of fortitude saves. All right, so we got Zachary to the 17, Graysong, Chauncey, uh, LK, and uh, right. That is me for Cranari. Uh, so, LK, you start choking. Uh, you're probably like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, LK would, would probably still continue his... He, he might actually be talking to Glob, and he might actually... Yeah. We don't we don't really know how how we got here. I my research as of late has 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 certainly been profitable, but I think I'm years away from uh, being able to execute the ma type of magic that might have brought us. And he's like talking to Glob as yeah. the like Glob knows what he's talking about. Uh, so he's he's just sort of like, oh, neat. You've got uh, respiratory problems. I've never seen that before. Oh, I mean, Is oh no. Uh, here I can help. Uh, try touching this. And he kind of like. You feel the whole thing kind of clench as um, he 
floats up a number of items. Like other orifices. His bed. No, not other orifices. <laughs> he floats up various objects. Um, in the center, there is a lantern. Um, and this lantern, I could have sworn I made a handout for. By the way, real quick, what would a critical success do for that? Uh, for this, it just means that you can breathe perfectly fine. Okay. Mick, does, it, does the air breath. feel thin or toxic? Uh, little from column A, little from column B. Okay. Um, give me one sec. I have to upload a image of this thing. All right. So while you're looking for that, like, um, the stuff that's affecting LK, is it like caused from this ooze? Like, I, I still think it's trying to eat us, but I'm not like panicking so much. No, the 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 lantern or the the glob seems fine. He doesn't seem to be like actively trying to hurt you. It does seem to be just the air that is around you and is toxic. Um, well, like uh, a fire elemental doesn't want to hurt you. It just likes to burn. I mean, and this is an ooze that likes to melt. In my opinion, <laughs> he might. Right. Um, but he he raises up these objects. Um, you can't really get a sense of his personality because apparently he just got gained one like five minutes ago. Mm. Well, I, I, I'm just wondering more. Like, is there anything I could roll or have to like figure out the actual properties of what's happening to us? Yeah, I'd say <laughs> um, I, like we need to risk cutting our hands up to get out of here. I'd say a. Um, uh, let me see, an arcana check or maybe a uh, uh, what's it called? Is it medicine in Pathfinder? Yeah, medicine check. Either medicine, nature, or arcana. And, and how far down are we? Uh, we about thirty. Nature check. God. I will try nature check. Oh, oh wow, that was awful. Uh, that so was awful. That was a one. In the uh, in the Pathfinder <laughs> rules, um, with uh, with sort of knowledge checks like this, it's typically. Um, uh, one person, either one person makes a check and other people can make assistance uh, uh, attempts, or multiple people can all make the check, but the DC becomes a little bit harder because uh, you're kind of uh, over. Gotcha. Uh, so, in the game, the system. Those are both uh, not great. Uh, Graysong, you are pretty sure that uh, as an elf, you are immune to this toxin. Mm. Um, all right, so in Chauncey's head. We are no longer in a mouth. We are in the other end. That's why it's hard to breathe. And we're safe for the moment. So Glob raises up this uh, lantern. Uh, there's a few other things. There is a um, a sword and a shield uh, that are made of red plate. Uh, but this lantern is what he's sort of bringing you to see. And it's uh, kind of a rusted brass lantern. It looks like it's been partially digested by some kind of ooze. Um and uh, it's otherwise undamaged. Uh, he says, uh, "Quick, uh, touch this." Uh, and like, LK is going to cast guidance on himself and chokingly step forward and grab it, saying, "He seems to have a tremendous grasp of anatomical knowledge for how long he's been alive." <laughs> and he grab grab onto the the lantern. Uh, yeah, the first the moment you touch this, uh, and. Uh, sort of like feel a magic charge pulse through it you can now breathe just fine uh in fact you also learn <gasps> something uh in your mind you can tell that this plane you're on is named terrestos the befouled craters of terrestos um i yeah, have... that. so you can tell that uh, the air is slightly chlorinated. You can now feel that there's slightly stronger gravity, and you're noticing that there is a, a sort of a soot uh, in the air that is collecting on your clothes. Uh, but this lantern actually protects you from all of those effects. Um, all right. Uh, seemingly breathing much easier, LK will uh, stare at the lantern and kind of look at it in his hand. And... Nice. Truly remarkable. I, I think our friend here has done us uh, a favor, and he would, he'll push it into uh, into anybody that's close to him, who, whoever's closest to him. He will like literally push it out. Uh, Chauncey, I think your uh, concerns are somewhat unwarranted. 
I'll go over and believing myself to be immune, I will go over and inspect the sword and shield. Uh, yeah. So the sword and shield are uh, painted red. Uh, it's a gladius and a uh, rather heavy shield. Um, the shield's got a metallic strap around it, and it's painted red with uh, holy symbols, as is the hilt of the gladius. Zachris, um, something of interest to you, perhaps? Zachris can use this, yes. I'll, I'll go into him. Pick him up. Yeah. yeah. Like the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as you as you hold these, you can feel that they are strong. Okay. Uh, these are uh, you've you've used a lot of weapons in your mm -hmm. short life, and you can tell that both of these things are magical. Ah, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Zacharis thinks these are special. Zacharis will hold these. Uh, if you would like, you could make me an arcana check or ask one of your... Actually, I guess this would be a religion check because there's definitely religious symbols on them. Uh, you could ask someone to make a religion check for you. Uh, I would... Uh, I, I, hmm? Would I... W having seen them, I yeah. think, first, would I have known to have checked that? Uh, yeah, you can... Uh, a religion check in this case would be sort of a historical knowledge check. Uh, if you'd like All to right. roll it, you can. Yeah, I've got a... Uh, 14, um, so, so. now I have to look up really quickly the magic item, uh, identification, because I know that's a thing. <laughs> General skills, to save for writing, uh, earn income, practice trade, identify magic. Uh, DC is, the GM sets the DC for your check. Really? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yep. I will say because, uh, the 14... So, what I'm going to say is, you can identify that this uh, gladius is actually a simple plus one weapon. You recognize one of the holy symbols as a um, uh, a rune of enchantment. Is it uh, that makes it the plus one? Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. It is a plus one red plate gladius. Um, it's got no handguard, painted bright red. Uh, it's etched in specific religious symbols, and the symbols you notice are of fire and hope. Fire and hope. Okay. Yes. Um, that is what uh, Graysong can sort of identify. Okay. Um, one sort of world thing in this homebrew system is that most gods don't have their own unique symbols, so much as they're made up of a... Uh, uh, a combination of symbols for domains. So this person, wh whoever this god is, is a god of fire and hope, uh, among other things. Do I know of any other gods that might have tangential domains or similar domains? Um, there's a good handful, um, but uh, nothing that you can really pinpoint. Uh, you don't recognize any of them. A lot of gods will have different symbols based on sort of what they want to feature. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't identify this as any one particular thing. So yeah, like some of the gods might have, there might be 10 gods with fire mm -hmm. in their name, right? Like the sun god or the destruction god will still have fire. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, shield? Uh, the shield has the same symbols, but uh, you're not sure what the, what the, power is of it. Uh, however, you do know that it is quite strong. Yeah. So, uh, Goop, or yeah, Goop. I like to be called Glob. <laughs> Glob? <laughs> that too. Uh, would this uh, blade and piece of metal happen to be yours? Oh, uh, no. Um, well, I think, I mean, I don't remember anything before this conversation, but uh, I think things keep getting dropped into me, and uh, only the magic stuff uh, is stuff I can't eat. I'm just gonna start getting out of the uh, rooms again. Just like, oh, do you? At my arms like a uh, rabbit, like helicopter my way out of. Uh, do you guys want to get out? I can, I can help you get out. Very much so. Yes. That would uh, be kind of you. Uh, do the rest of you want to touch this uh, lantern? As of right now, I don't know I need to. <laughs> you are finding, like, your eyes tearing up based on the, the poison. You're just sort of in denial. 
No, Sean, <laughs> his eyes aren't tearing up because of the poison. He's actively like holding back tears. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way I want that pull. Zachris will touch it. He'll, he'll touch the lantern. Uh, yeah, Zachris, the moment you touch it, you also feel much better while you're close to it. If I'm feeling any ill effects, then I'll go over and touch it. Okay. Uh, Kunari will as well. Um, Chauncey, do you want to risk not? I am touching sure. it. <laughs> All right, you touch it. Um, yeah, you guys feel uh, pretty strong on this. Uh, sorry, you cut out there for me again. Oh, if anything, I'm like almost hugging Zachris because he's the biggest, scariest looking thing here. <laughs> <laughs> Next um, um, as they all touch that lantern, uh, are any of you feeling any sudden revelations? You guys I all, assume we do. Yes, you all learn the name of this plane. Uh, and, I mean, you're not even sure that this is a different plane. You don't even, some of you don't even know what an arcane plane is. Um, but nope. uh, you know the name, uh, the uh, 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 Befouled Craters of Trestos. I know the name of this place. I know some of the nature of this place. It would appear as though Fenrisil's planar magic has... He was working on planar... Yes. Uh, his, yeah. uh, his his planar magic has, has sent us somewhere apparently called Terrestos. Um, I'm going to take my hand off the lantern for a second. Yeah. Uh, you guys, you don't have to hold on to it. It's... Uh, Once you've touched yeah, it, okay. Or, uh, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean... I kind of described this pit as only being 30 feet, but I might as well tell you guys that you think you have to stay within 50-odd feet of it. Of the lantern, okay. Of the lantern. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of protecting you. You Not only can you breathe better, but you also feel a little bit, like, more... You didn't realize it until now, but you feel you felt kind of twisted. Like, uh, this is not a natural place for you. Um, like, I don't know, being a... Uh, tourist in a city you've never been to. Are there any symbols on the lantern? Uh, there is some symbols at the very top uh, in the image, um, but you don't recognize them as anything more than just uh, decoration. Hmm. I'm still going to copy all of them down, every symbol that we have. Um, also, to note, uh, there is nothing inside this lantern. I say it's a lantern because it looks like a lantern, but there's no like bulb for a uh, or um, oil reserve there's nothing like that uh the glass around it is uncracked and there's no latch to open it up hmm. um yeah a curious detail but um did any of you notice a, an exchange of conversation before we left the material plane oh well, yeah that uh dude was up in the middle one with that ears like yours, and he's giving a big speech to the whole crowd. N not the conversation I had in mind. There was another conversation by a blonde man, and another, and uh, that conversed with a blind elf woman. Um, it should be noted that uh, it wasn't the blonde man that spoke. The blonde man just sort of watched you guys. It oh, was the oh. old elf and the human woman. Okay, well, yeah. I, then I will the describe. I was I'll describe them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you guys uh, say to that? Zachris heard, but Zachris does not know what he said. <laughs> Too many big words. It seemed like an odd bit of clarity. Um. Is that good? I. Do not know. Uh, Krenari will speak a little bit to Glob. Uh, Krenari says, um, So, you don't remember anything from before this conversation? You have sentience, right? I think so. Uh, hey, Nate! Sentience! And Krenari's <laughs> like, So you have no memories? Um, that's not exactly true. Uh, I do have, uh, some memories, but I don't think they're mine. I think they're fragments of your guys' memories. Uh, which oh. one of you milked a once-heated cow? Immediately, I'm gonna stare at Chansey. Chansey, sorry. That's, that seems an accurate was... guess, LK. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry, Chauncey, what did you say? Listen, I was eight. <laughs> Don't care what anybody says, I didn't drink it. <laughs> um, so you... We gave you consciousness. That's quite a responsibility. Um, we don't know where we are. Do you wish to help us? Yeah. I mean, you guys are the first friends I've ever had. Out of curiosity, I'm going to say in Sylvan to to Glob, can you understand me? Uh, da. We. Oui. Si, senor. Do it. Okay. You seem to have a grasp on a number of different obscure uh, sciences. What sort of uh, languages do you have? An obscure one. See if he understands it. Oh, you're muted again. Sorry, Elke <laughs> would, um, uh, would probably start running through greetings and, and salutations as he does with the we and the EC and the Vesta. He would probably respond in Jotun and every language that he knows uh, and yeah. try to probe to see if, if Glob knows them all. Yeah, Glob speaks them all. He's just sort of like, uh-huh, das wird ich denn? Uh, hi, wakaremashita. Uh, <laughs> si, senor. Um... I don't know how to say yes in any other language. Um, I, okay, is there a way for me to discern if uh, if running through those, are they are the languages that collectively we know, or if he knows any or speaking in any that we don't know? Uh, they are just the ones that collectively you know. When, when Glob speaks, like, since it's a Glob, uh, <laughs> does it have, like, a mouth that's, like, constantly talking? Or do we just hear it in our head? Um, well, two things. One... You hear it, it does speak. Uh, it doesn't have a mouth, but it does sort of like vibrate, um, and vibrates in a tonal thing that sort of sounds like a voice. Um, but uh, it's a good thing that you asked that because as you're listening to him and listening to everyone else, you're realizing that you understand all the languages that Grace Song and LK are saying as well. Oh. You look at the lantern and realize it's translating for you. Hmm. How intriguing. So, really, no, I... actually, Glob just went, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but do we recognize that we recognize that the transition in languages? Yes. Um, okay, so, so the lantern's working like a like a like a Wi-Fi babblefish. Yes. Okay. Um, and do we, we know that? We recognize that? Yeah. Um, All right. So when he does speak in Jot, um, we actually hear the words, but we just know the meaning? Or does it sound like common? Or uh, Well, here's the thing. In Star Trek, they can all hear... Every, everyone speaks English because of the translators. So basically, it's that same thing that's happening... Um, I don't know how Star Trek does it, but whatever the logic is in Star Trek, that's the logic here. Okay, so <laughs> if uh, some like I'm speaking normally, and then I guess Elf shows up, and I start bad mouthing him in Dwarvish, so he wouldn't understand me. I'm just like, oh hey, how's it going, best buddy? Oh, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> yeah, that would uh, that would translate. Um, it, yeah, you guys can determine that they're speaking different languages. Like, I am speaking Elvish, um, but you just happen to understand it. It's not like translating a different language or echoing or anything. It's just, you know. Um, so, I mean, LK is just going to be straight up fascinated from like a linguistic perspective with this item doing that. Uh, especially, like, AoE doing that. Yeah, and that's the thing. You've definitely heard of spells that do this, but only for one person. Yeah, um... So and it, there's there's no operational aspect of the the lantern ring, so you can't get into it or kind of open it up or otherwise like interact with it. Well, you actually notice that at the very top there is a um, the the top bit actually spins a little bit. There's two sort of uh, if you imagine like a uh, what are those square toys uh, cubes Rubik's cubes Rubik's cubes sort yeah. of like you can spin two different levels of it at the very top. Uh, however, okay. that doesn't seem to do anything. Also, you have a Rubik's Cube. That's perfect. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Um, so, uh, Glob... Well, uh, oh, yeah. 
You said you could get us out of here. Oh, yeah. Um, well, let me try and bring you up the top of the pit. And you feel the whole pit kind of rise about five feet. And then he's like, and you immediately like fall five. Uh, I don't think I can get you out that way. Um, I, oh, I think I'm connected to a different pit. Uh, I can let you out that side. What does that mean? Well, see how this pit has like a 30 foot high. Chance. It has a 30 foot high roof. Um, the other pit on the other end is only like two feet up. The other pit on the other end. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm in a tunnel. Yeah, all the stuff underneath me, that's a tunnel. You know what, Booger? I'm down for anything once. Let's do it. <laughs> Booger. <laughs> that's canon now. <laughs> oh, oh, neat. My first micro... Uh, fuck, what's the word? Microaggression. My microaggression. <laughs> uh, do you guys trust me? <laughs> I don't um, think you have a choice. Take me now. I, I don't know that we have a choice not to trust you at this point in time. Exactly. Well, I can do this a lot better. See, watch. And uh, he sort of opens up a whole, like, Chauncey, you feel your feet sort of sinking in, and, like, within two seconds, you're, like, engulfed in this ooze. Mm -hmm. Uh, you find yourself, uh, being sort of, like, pulsed downwards, like you're being sort of digested through a, uh, intestinal tract, uh, and at the <laughs> and sort of strong. leave the view of everyone else. Because yeah. I know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> Mm, uh, right. The rest of you, what do you want to do? So Glob's like, uh, if you guys want, I can bring you guys too. Uh, yeah, I'll call Harvey uh, and tell him to fly down into my onto my head, and I'll put my hat back oh. on top. And... I guess Harvey's still <laughs> unconscious. Oh, yeah, you have to okay. touch Harvey to the lantern <sighs> so he can breathe. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so he'll uh, engulf you guys, <laughs> and then. Uh, you also feel yourself sort of pulled down this uh, this tunnel. Uh, Graysong and Zachris, you see the two of them sort of go down yeah. to the darkness and shift off to the side through some kind of unseen tunnel. Um, he's like, I don't want to do it to you guys if you don't want to, but I don't think I can get you out any other way. I feel very uncomfortable by this, but by all means. Zachris is ready. Okay, cool. And I'll uh, hold my breath. Me! People trust me! That's weird! Uh, and he lets you guys down as well. Uh, Grace on Zachris, you feel yourself pulsed through. Uh, Zachris, as a lizard folk, you can probably hold your breath for quite a while. Um, yeah. But, uh, Graysong, you find yourself, like, almost at the limits of your held breath. Um, and as your, like, eyes start to water, you feel yourself suddenly flung upwards uh, and sort of launched onto hard ground. Uh, you guys find yourself at the edge of a small two-foot deep pit, um, where Glob is the rest of it, and, uh, all around are heaps of, well, garbage. Uh, there's broken statues, sticky, like, messes, ancient machinery. Most of it is just unidentifiable ooze, um, in piles spread around. Uh, Glob says... I'm assuming that was a very, um, non-enjoyable experience. Uh, I mean, it depends what Chauncey's into. <laughs> so... That's a whole other session. <laughs> Probably brought me back to the days of being in an A. So. Back yeah. when I was in college. Why? As you guys get to your feet, is... you... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, why, why is there refuse in these pits? I don't know. Uh, I think it's been happening for a long time. But that's just my observation. I don't actually have any memories of it. You guys vibrate weird. Did anyone tell you that? Many times. There's like... I... The world around us vibrates like, like this. And he kind of wiggles. And it's like, but you guys vibrate like this. There was yeah, a hole might... in the sky. It vibrated like you too. 
There's, there is a hole in the sky, or well, there the... was a hole in the sky. If there was. It's not vibrating like that anymore. Exactly. Does not know what you mean. Sorry. I hope it's not insulting. Um, that may be the key to getting out of this. There seems to be some difference between us and this world. Uh, and he would probably say to and he, he's going to look at the at, at glob and he wants to kind of speak almost like nonsensically just like random gibberish but intend what he's saying i uh, thought i if, thought about that same, same thing to see if to see if that gets translated and be like do you know anything more about uh did you say the hole up there like the portal that we came through or the the wormhole or what have you uh is that with, what he's referring to if you're not using a real language he has no idea what you're talking about Okay, fair enough. Um, so as he looks at me confusingly, I'll ask him then uh, directly and say, "Glob, is is uh, is do you do you know any way to get up to those holes?" Uh, no, but they're not all up in the sky. There's some more holes. Uh, there, there's one that's close. It's that way. I can lead you there. Okay, we we'll look around at everybody. Well, let us let us look through this this rubbish, as it were, in these pits to see if there's any clues, perhaps, as to, I mean, either the, the nature of what is being deposited here, or perhaps the, the, the cultures in question, whether there's some relationship between what is dropped here and, and the place we came from. Kronari will nod and say... I'll Go ahead. I think we should bring Glob. He seems to at least understand things better than us. Yeah, you said there's another hole around here. How does it vibrate? Oh, uh, like a bird. You oh, know hey, what a bird is? Birds! I've never heard of, thought of a bird before. Hmm. Uh, okay, so. I'm picturing this little thing has like little tendrils in us or something, and it's like <laughs> draining our like brain fluid or something. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna get out of the pit and like shake off and like do a whole like. Yeah, no, you, you guys are myself. all on the side of this pit. Uh, you're not touching him anymore. Um, he's still in this like two foot deep pit. Um, there's actually not many pits around. Most of it is just piles on like uh, cliff shelves, almost uh, as far as the eye can see. Uh, just hills of trash. Uh, Glob in his pit isn't touching you and just sort of raises up his little globe and looks at you. And it's it's tiny. It's like the size of Harvey. I should have described. Mm. Not like all of Glob, or the, uh, the globe? Just the, just the globe. The okay. the head of it. Um, uh, the, yeah, the rest of the ooze goes into the tunnel. I'm going to look in through the refuse and see, A, is there something of value? And B, is there anything that points at, you know, specific theme or, or consistent culture? And um, see, is there anything that is of, of, of sort of written intent? Uh, yeah, I'd say a, uh, a crafting or a perception check, depending on if you want to do more of noticing if anything is interesting or if you want to identify what you've already found, the sort of obvious things. Okay. Uh, 15. It's not terrible. Uh, you <clears throat> notice that a few of the piles have, uh, sort of, like he said, themes. Like, this pile all seems to be sort of volcanic refuse. Um, there's, like, weird statues made of this sort of hard charcoal. Like, the statue itself got burnt to a crisp. Um, that's sort of, you know, it's been tossed unceremoniously on the ground and sort of shattered in a couple pieces. Uh, as for writing, you don't really find much. Uh, you do find a few things that have, like, runes that are completely illegible to you. Even with, like, the lantern, you can't seem to read any differently. LK, does this make any sense to you? It's more your parlance, I suspect. Uh, LK, with your languages, uh... You can recognize it as uh, Aquan. 
Hmm. This uh, resembles the syntax of, of Aquan. Uh, I don't know if you speak Aquan, but... I do not. Ah. He would I've probably noticed... be familiar with it from like a grammatical sense rather than a syntactic sense. Yeah. I've noticed that each of these piles of things has a particular theme, which, which it, to the very least, points to an intelligence behind its organization. Um, it's funny that you say that, because as you say that, about 300 feet that way, a rift opens up in the sky and dumps a load of garbage onto the ground and then <laughs> closes up. Is that the vibration you were speaking of? Uh, yeah, it's something like that. Hmm. But I can only sense one that's on the ground nearby. Uh, the rest are really high up. So, to like paint a picture, um, have you seen Thor Ragnarok? I haven't. <laughs> it's um, yeah. kind of like that, except there's no giant pools of not sentient food. Yeah, you, you um, do notice uh, further away there's another pit, and it is filled with sort of a darkish blue ooze, but it's not moving and doesn't seem to be connected with Glob in any way. So, just a quick question, Glob. Since you didn't eat us, uh, not even sure if you do eat, but have you ever had any things like us that move around in this immediate vicinity uh i don't know i only remember you guys because i only remember things when you guys touch me oh. well do you, do you feel any vibrations in the area that would potentially want to do us harm uh i can't really tell but I think I sense there's more vibrations like you guys that are, you know, in this area. I don't know if they want to hurt you, but they're kind of everywhere. The other obvious question is, do the other goos that are in the other pits also react to touch? I got no idea. Uh, not trying to figure that one out. <laughs> I've passed... I do not want to have to do that again. Once is good enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Mick, I'm gonna I'm gonna look through uh, some the some of these piles to see if there's anything useful or if all looks like it's just completely useless refuse. Uh, yeah. Uh, using your fifteen. Um, actually, I I would like you to make a crafting check. Okay. I think would be the best. Come okay. I can do that. Uh, oh, nice. Well, hello. Uh, yeah. As you sort of head off um, to a, you know, searching a couple piles in the vicinity without going too far from the party, uh, you realize as you get about fifty feet away from the lantern, you have trouble breathing again. So you mm. stay within <laughs> that radius. Um, mm. But uh, you do find uh, in one pile there seems to be largely like debris of ships um there's like uh, uh uh rotten seaweed and uh piles of sand and like the just the back end of a ship there uh in that rubble you find a spyglass uh like a telescope thing um that uh is uh, sort of edged in brass uh, that would be worth something. Uh, you also find a small little jewelry box, uh, which has a very prominent lock on the front. I will take both. Um, does anyone know how to pick a lock? I sh well, first I'll check to see if it is locked. Yeah, it's locked pretty tight. It's not my foray, but I have some experience. I feel like Chauncey is the... Yeah, but I'm staying quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, got my thieves tools in my bandolier on, like, my chest. So very obvious. It's very obvious. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll go, hmm. Good to know, and I'll hand it to Chauncey. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well, yeah. I'm picturing you have the spyglass. Be like, and what would yeah. you like to do with this, Captain? <laughs> uh, open it. Would be my choice. Yeah. It's locked. Make me a thievery check. Picking the if lock and, op it. and opening right. it. <laughs> thievery, three, three, right there. Boom. Nice. Uh, I'm not even... So typically you have to make multiple checks with thievery wow. to open up a lock, but you just jam it in and instantly it opens. Right? Uh, yeah, that... <laughs> I, I picture, like, there's a lock on it, but it wasn't locked, so I was just like, flick it. <laughs> like, there yeah. you go. And I'll hand it back. Uh, so inside, there is uh, a sort of a, a padded inside. Like, it's made of felt with a little bit of um, cloth sort of padding it. Uh, and there is neatly stacked uh, 30 gold doubloons. Uh, they are not any kind of coinage you've ever seen before, but they are approximately the same shape and size of a gold coin that you've seen at home. Uh, keep in mind that in your guys' home plane, a silver piece is approximately two dollars of like two dollars US. Like if you imagine you would go to a vending machine and take out a, a twenty, that would be like two gold. Actually, wait, no. No, a silver, one silver is like twenty bucks. Or ten bucks. So you'd go and you take out what? multiple silvers. So this is a copper piece is a, a, so a dollar, a lot of money. and then it goes up by tens. Yeah, so this is this is a lot of money. Yeah, uh, also, there is a vial um, about yay big, um, filled with a sh shiny silvery paste. Uh, Chauncey, being Which a, I know, yeah, yeah, being an alchemist, uh, you would recognize this is silver sheen. Uh, as a action, you can Chauncey knows that. Yeah, you what can is it? Yeah. Slather silvery paste onto a melee weapon, uh, or one thrown weapon, or ten pieces of ammunition. Uh, <laughs> it spoils quickly, so once you open a vial, you must use it all at once. And for the next hour, the weapon counts as silver instead of its normal material. So you would know that things like, say, werewolves are only harmed by silver. So wherever this uh, chest it came from, they must have had. Uh, problems with creatures that are hurt by silver <laughs> on the high seas <laughs> where sharks where sharks everywhere <laughs> i will cast detect magic on any like obviously the the vial is magic but anything else either either with the spyglass or anything in the immediate vicinity that i can detect that is magic um, so, uh, with the tech magic, it's different, uh, than the 5e version. The okay. tech magic's a cantrip that just, uh, pings yes or no. It's not even, like, a hot, hot, cold kind of thing. Gotcha. It's just yes or no. Um, okay, so is the spyglass magic? The spyglass is not magic. Okay. Um, you can ignore, uh, things that you already know. So you're kind of ignoring, you know that this sword is magical, so you ignore it. Um, you do detect, uh, magic... Uh, in another pile, sort of across from the the boat one. All right, I'll head towards it. Um, the uh, the magic you find is actually a small crystal. Um, let me find the correct handout. Uh, so uh, a little fluorite crystal. Um, it uh, glows, uh, not unlike glob does. Um, you know it's. Again, this big. Uh, and that is where the magic's coming from. Uh, I'll carefully take it. Uh, yeah, touching it, it doesn't hurt or anything. Um, to identify magic, you'd have to use either uh, arcana, occultism, nature, or religion. Uh, I'll use nature, if I may. I'm going to assist if I can. Uh, yeah, assisting is uh, you have to roll it yourself, uh, the same skill, and use a DC 20 to give him plus one on it. It's actually much worse than 5e. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, 15, uh, do you want to try and make a DC 20? Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> a critical failure actually gives a minus one. Luckily, uh, 14 is enough to tell that this is a potency crystal. What is that? Oh, 
Uh, a potency crystal is a uh, talisman, so it is a consumable. Uh, essentially, you affix it to a weapon, uh, either attach it to the um, pommel or like somewhere prominent. And uh, let's see, as a trigger, when you make an attack with the affixed weapon but haven't rolled yet, you can uh, activate it to make it a plus one striking weapon for the rest of the turn. Can I put it in my hand wraps? Uh, you can. Okay, I will do so. Uh, yeah. Um, attaching I will talisman... highly certain that's not even a magical item. Attaching a talisman is probably about ten minutes, I think. Okay. Uh, I will hand the I'll hand the doubloons to either LK or Krenari or yeah, anybody think... who wants to take them over. I... I do know that Eric likes keeping track of that kind of thing, so okay. Krenari seems like the perfect fit to. Okay. But I, yeah, but I will affix, I will spend some time to fix the crystal. Uh, so I think I asked this earlier, but can I reverse en engineer the silver sheen and add it the alchemical formula into my book? Uh, there might be rules for that, and I don't know them off by heart. Um, but we can handle that between sessions, assuming you don't use it in the next awesome. little while. Um, <laughs> so Glob sort of says. Uh, yeah, I think there are more things vibrating like you guys. Um, and like the holes in the sky, uh, there's one that's close to the ground. And it's, uh, well, I don't really know distance, but it's like seven me lengths that way. Well, our friend here seems to maybe not be able to differentiate between us and these portals. But if it's either a way out or people who might know a way out, I think we only really have one choice uh one question though can can i come with you i don't see why not <laughs> okay cool now, uh can i see the can lantern? you walk uh i can ooze and he kind of like oozes himself onto land like a weird tiny sea lion it's like uh can you bring the lantern over to me how, how far is he away? Uh, only like two feet. You should be feeling its effects from where you are. No, I, I mean, I want to touch it. Um, yeah? Okay, I'll walk over. I'm not going to let go of it, but I'll like yeah. stick it on him. So yeah, as you touch it to him, he kind of goes like, and merges into the glass until he is now entirely engulfed inside this lantern. Uh, you can still hear his voice, though he's slightly muffled. He's like, cool. Uh, oh, I can't sense the rest of me anymore. Oh, well, this is fun. I've never done this before. I mean, I've never done anything before. Let's go. How fascinating. Uh, and uh, can you still, can you still feel where the other hole is? Uh, no, not really. Well, we might need you to lead us there. Oh, oh, sorry. The, the other hole in the sky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, All right, that way. And he kind of so, like jiggles the lantern sideways. So when he went into the lantern, did he like pass through any holes or did he move through solid object? He moved through the solid glass. Okay. Chauncey will note that <laughs> for future. This will be an important And he's going to worry now. horribly. <laughs> Um, As we go along to the other hole, I will periodically, like, ping Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, so this actually leads us to the uh, Traveling Montage, also known as a Skill Challenge. So uh, in this Skill Challenge, you guys need to cross the uh, terrifying, desolate wastelands of Terrustos. Um... What this entail is that uh, in any order, uh, you guys have to make skill checks. Uh, basically, you choose an activity, and then I'll tell you what to roll for it. Um, it might be a skill check, a saving throw. Um, if you have a, a spell or ability that would help, um, then you can use that as well. Um, but you have to describe how the activity could help you get to your location or complete the challenge. In this case, it's... Uh, going through a sea of trash uh, without getting lost. Although, Glob is helping you by 
pointing you out. Uh, one final rule is that uh, you can't make two actions in a row, and you can't use the same uh, skill. Uh, like Each individual person can't use the same skill uh, more than once in this combat. Or combat challenge. Uh, you mm. have to accrue a number of successes before you get a number of failures. Um... So considering Chauncey is a trash human being, yes, <laughs> like that <laughs> bonuses for this, like <laughs> it depends what you're doing. I think uh, you know if you I feel like this is where Florida man lives, <laughs> right? And I'm watching out for that. <laughs> you know, keep... like we to... found we found Chauncey's home dimension is what you're telling me. <laughs> um, you just gonna stay. So yeah, uh, I put some examples here. Things like uh, you know going up and climbing some hills uh, to scout the lay of the land, uh, guiding air allies through, uh, taking lead in navigation, using knowledge of toxins or magic, uh, taking charge and raising the team's morale. Um, what would you like to do? I'll just, I'll use survival to try to find the most expedient path through the refuse, so. Uh, yeah, roll me a survival. I have to look up what DCs are. Uh, yes. Uh, so what were you doing exactly? It was, uh... I'm basically trying to... I'm using survival to find the most expedient path through the refuse, so... Using my scout instincts, um, to do so. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you instinctively, uh, know... You notice some places that look like almost a trash quicksand, uh, and deftly maneuver everyone around it. Um, Kronari is sort of taken aback by uh, oh, that could have taken us instantly. And Blob is just like, oh, cool! That could have killed you! Neat! <laughs> uh, so, someone else, what would you like to do? Um, LK will uh, maybe entreat uh, Harvey to uh, give us helicopter ears. You think you can get us... <laughs> I love that that's a thing. I I so have a picture that is vividly I, in my mind with this. And I don't imagine, I imagine with his ears functioning in that helicopter fashion, he is limited physiologically such that yes. his body is going with it. Yeah. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> See, that, that to me is like the most perfect wizard um, familiar. Something that's just high jinxy funny. Like... I had an owl that would always hoot whenever it thought it had a like a suitable mate for me. Oh god! <laughs> oh jeez! And it would just like hoot at the dumbest shit because um, it I, hated me. I would like you to make me a um, a, 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 a perception check using the bunny stats. Perception check using his stats. Okay. He'd have, like, 360 vision, wouldn't he? So he's, like, better like, for this. Yeah, I'll give him plus two to this. Does he use... Hold on. Does he use mine for... Sorry, perception, acro, stealth is level plus. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Sorry, and which role did you want? Uh, perception. Just, perce uh, so, yes, perception is my level plus spellcasting ability mod. Okay. So four, five, plus five. Uh, so yeah, you can just roll me a d20 plus 5. <laughs> Hi there. What, what, what was Sorry, that? Nope. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. You saw nothing. Uh, oh, 17. Sorry, it didn't show up for me for a second. Uh, 17 is, yeah, just barely enough. He uh, flies you around and is like... Oh, there's an easier path that. Or wait, what's his voice? Hi, what was the easier path that way? Uh, oh, not not that not that way. Oh, uh, oh shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that way. And you, basically, the difficulty is just trying to figure out where he's trying to actually point you because the using, way I'm looking. He's tiny, kind of using a tiny. Yeah, it, it's he's like the way I'm looking. Go the way I'm looking. You know, keep keep. No, nope, go leftwards. No, nope, clockwise, clockwise. What a shins. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is definitely another success. Uh, you guys have to accrue. Um, you're not sure exactly how many successes because it's not a thing. Um, but uh, you got to do some more. Uh, what do you guys want to do? 
are we allowed uh, interacting across turns? Like, if if Chauncey goes to do something, can I give him guidance? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's Bam. assumed that you already are. Kind of. <laughs> okay. So I know it's probably not the most beneficial, <laughs> but I like the idea of keeping everyone's morale up <laughs> as they travel. Oh um, no! Very Chauncey way <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. Please make me a diplomacy check. No, I want to. I want to hear the inspirational speech. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this needs to be That's role right. played. Uh, all right. So with that three, I rolled. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be like, listen, we're not all, you know, you're not as trashy as this place. I mean, like, you, I mean, you don't know how to dress. You kind of look funny. Uh, some people aren't even tall enough to like ride the rides at the fair. Um. <laughs> But you know what? I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> uh, oh, neat! I've never felt any depression before. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, unfortunately, people are a little too distracted and unable to uh, really benefit from your uh, expertise. Um, as you uh, sort of slow everyone down slightly, uh, the more perceptive of you notice uh, a couple things sort of shift in piles. Maybe from like a uh, the corner of your eye, you think you see something moving, but by the time you look, it's just trash. Uh, even if you go and inspect, there doesn't seem to be anything there. Um, just as a quick uh, uh, add-on uh, for LK, uh, you mentioned like uh, guidance. I would allow you to make like a uh, a guidance um, check using Arcana uh, to sort of as a full check. So, use an Arcana check to then just give guidance to anybody uh, that's doing this. It wouldn't give anyone guidance. It would give you either a success or a fail. But like you oh, could I use see. it as part of your how you're helping the party is by guiding everyone. Um, yeah, so that was, uh, Chauncey. What would, uh, the rest of you like to do? I, I imagine Krenari would also help. If you'd like to ask, uh, them to do something. And I guess I could do the, kind of the, the first example, you know, maybe climb up a, uh, uh, you know, at a higher spot. Uh, and, um... Yeah. So I'll use uh, athletics. Yeah. yeah. How do you tell the party that you're gonna what you're doing? <clears throat> I just want to hear the voice. <laughs> okay. Um, Zachris will go up this hill and look around. Oh, you neat! Say. Halitosis. <laughs> yeah. What? No, Zachris. Ah, right, right. Zachris. Yeah, your no. breath smells really Zachris. Anyway. Uh, Thank you. Anyway, you can uh, make an athletics check if you like. Yeah. All right. Uh, perfect. Yeah, you climb up a hill, and uh, same thing as the bunny. You're able to yeah. guide people after the bunny gets a little bit tired <laughs> of flying. This whole way, me and Glob are just tag team shitting on everybody. <laughs> I thought hair was supposed to be, like, a sign of beauty. Why are you bald? He's just... Actually, Kanari would say, exactly, um, I encourage you to never believe that you cannot be better or smarter or stronger than what anyone tells you. That is what I believe for myself. Um, yeah. So, uh, I need some more successes here, guys. Yeah, um, the sun I is can going use... down. And... Using the su suggestion from chat, I actually do have a uh, survey wildlife. Oh. Um, I could attempt to uh, make certain that it says uh, you can study the details in the wilderness to determine the presence of nearby creatures. Um, we did see movement, so basically trying to steer clear of any specific dangers. Um, yeah. It's a survival check, which is, this is uh, not specifically the vanilla flavor of that, though, if that makes any sense. I, I'll allow it. It's similar enough. Um, so, yeah, make me a survival check using that skill feat. Uh, if you could, also pop the skill feat out in chat. 
Oh yeah, I can do that. Uh, let's uh, see. That actually has a good. That reminded me of something. Does my oddity identification tell like give me any kind of insight into how this little ooze is weaseling his way into our memories? Uh. Normally, oh. yes, but the DC is astronomical. Because, okay. Uh, all right, so that survival, unfortunately, is not good enough. Uh, yeah. You do notice there is a presence of creatures, of things sort of following you. Um, but uh, as you sort of try and figure out exactly what they are, um, you actually uh, stumble into some dangerous uh, locations. Uh I needed to make me a uh, tetanus-based fortitude save. Hmm. Uh -oh. Let's see. Fortitude, fortitude, fortitude. Uh, you're perfectly fine. Um, as you sort of look around as to what <clears throat> cut you, you realize that whatever it was must have been thrown at you. Hmm. Um, you guys are getting dangerously close to sundown. LK will, uh, not having, let's say, the athletic uh, fortitude to be able to uh, make our path any easier, um, he will maybe make an attempt to use Mage Hand to push the trash in front of him, clearing it out and letting us focus more on kind of the travel and the, the path rather than the actual garbage. Uh, yeah, that would be perfect. Um, you, uh, is Arcana your best? Or, sorry, you're a wizard, so Arcana is your magic. Yep. Uh, so with this, because it's a like skill challenge, I'm gonna say that the Mage Hand allows you to use your Arcana uh, for this. So I'll like you, I'd like you to make an Arcana check. Uh, it's actually gonna be quite easy because of the how well Mage Hand works in this situation. Um, in that case, can I use Assurance? Uh, yeah. So do assurance. I get to know? Do I get to know with Assurance what the skill check is, or am I kind of? gambling on that. What do you mean? Well, assurance gives me 10 plus, right? Uh, yes, in a specific skill. Oh, you know yeah. what? Sorry, uh, I switched that. I switched that in our playtest from Arcana to Society, so I will oh. not use assurance. Uh, but what I will do is add plus one to my Arcana from my hat. Oh, you've got, yeah, a, uh, you've got a magic hat that gives you plus one. Uh, so is that including the plus one? That is, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you, you know, just at as uh, Zachris is about to climb over something, uh, you move away the sharp bits that uh, could have scraped up the the underbelly. Careful, friend. Um, Glob is like, uh, you guys are really close. Uh, I think we're almost there. Uh, but I can definitely sense more vibrations around us. So, uh, uh, be fast. Oh, neat! I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone got somebody? Somebody else want to take one before? I mean, I can, but does somebody hasn't. else. Want... If you guys give me the option, I'm gonna use something terrible. <laughs> I think Krenari We is... don't want to give you the option because we know we know Chauncey. Oh, so I just realized uh, Krenari knows Aquin. Uh, so I'll figure that out uh, later. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, Krenari is going to use diplomacy to um, help uh, do basically what Chauncey did, but to offset the effects of what Chauncey did. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> uh, be like a, a theme going forward. <laughs> Everything that Chauncey said, completely false. <laughs> um, yeah, luckily. So you guys uh, pass through uh, some uh, dangerous locales and you feel your, like, your arms starting to give out as you're pulling yourself up, uh, you know, steps and all sorts of piles of things. But Krenari, you know, gives you strong words. I don't know exactly what Krenari would say, but uh, whatever Krenari says, it is very helpful. Uh, you guys pull yourself up to uh, the top of a hill, um, and uh, you luckily, by succeeding in this skill challenge, spot the creatures. They look like this. Yeah. And they are right here. 
Uh, and for the first time in the night, uh, we jump to a combat. Leroy Trash so, Jenkins. <laughs> I know out of character this is a combat, but like, do they look like they're following us? That they want to like... Uh, yes, they have uh, picked up uh, very sharp objects and are getting ready to throw them at you. Friends of yours, Glop? Uh, no, but they're definitely what's, uh, been chasing us. Uh, so, uh, I would like you guys, uh, to roll initiative. Make sure you select your token yes. before rolling initiative. Oh, oh thank you <laughs> for calling up. Uh, Maybe they um, weren't following us, and they actively, like, are hunting Glob. <laughs> like, what? he's a food source on this planet. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna use your higher, uh, one, Zachris. I'm also oh, gonna give okay. you all plus one to this, because... Oh. You succeeded in your uh, skill challenge, Jeez. so eight. Grayson gets a nine. Uh, yeah, I'm rolling horribly in <laughs> on a few of these rolls tonight. And Krenari, I've got to make sure I select. Grayson was trying to pay attention, but LK Stick kept prying at him for information about those Aquan symbols. <laughs> Both is too distracted to fight. All right, uh, Zachris, you spot the two strange trash demons as they uh, get up to no good and look like they're okay. picking up pieces of trash to throw at you. Ah. Um, it is your turn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. All right, so uh, <laughs> it's been a while with the uh, Pathfinder. You get three actions, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can move your speed, which I think for you is 30 feet. I think, uh, no, it's 25. 25? Yeah. Um, and uh, if you want to do the moving thing, I know you often forget yeah. the thing. It's uh, the Q key. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. um, okay. since we're on, like, a weird planet plane, would it be safe to assume we had our weapons out? Uh, well, you're climbing. You're spending a lot of time climbing. Like, normally I would say you have your weapons out as long as there's not a reason not to. But you are spending a lot of effort, you know, climbing ridges and, and the like, so you don't have your stuff out yet. Alright. So, uh, so you, Zachris, you would uh, make a move action to get yep. there, and then an action yep. to draw your weapon? Yep, draw, yep. draw the uh, Gladius, and then I will attack. Uh, perfect. With the Gladius. Make sure I did this right. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, that is an 18. Mm -hmm. uh, that hits. Uh, so, um, you click the part that said attack. Uh, if yeah. you click the actual name, it'll do both right. attack and damage. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 right after I clicked that, but I couldn't unclick it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, eight damage. You rush up to this uh, uh, Jenkin thing uh, and it hisses. Uh, it's that. definitely bestial, uh, but it like hisses. Yeah. Uh, okay. Eight damage on it. Um, it's yeah. not quite bloodied yet, but it does sort of bleed this acrid acid on the uh, pillar it's standing on. Ah, okay. Uh, so that was three actions. Um, yes. The uh, grimy trash jinkin uh, is going to take an action to sort of shuffle over to this side of the pit. Uh, they have little vestigial wings they, they use to glide. They can't really fly because they're too slimy. Um, it takes some uh, sharp like, like a some kind of navigational tool and just hucks it as hard as he can at Graysong. Hmm. Uh, 23 to hit and... That will definitely hit. 3 piercing damage. Um, and then it's going to uh, take cover by the rim of this uh, the rim of this sort of pit thing here. That brings us to uh, this Jenkin, uh, which I'm just trying to think. I swore I had a button for take cover, but I will have to add that. For the meantime, I will raise his shield. Okay. Uh, so the Scar Chest Jenkin is going to respond by uh, stabbing you point blank with this thing. Okay. Uh, 19 to hit, I think, hits yeah, you. Hits. Yep. Uh, only two piercing damage. Um, okay. And then it's going to uh, leap sort of backwards and float this way. Um, 
unless you actually have the attack of opportunity feats, uh, then you, uh, yeah, it sort of floats over here. Uh, okay. It's going to make a second attack, uh, throwing the uh, <laughs> ranged slashy things. That's at a minus five, so <clears throat> even worse. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, Chauncey. All right, so that boy is over there. I am going to um, take a five foot step there, like search my body for a um, some kind of ammo as I whip out a sling and just, I guess, toss it at the boy. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And I can add my decks to this because of my um, uh, my thieves racket, right? Yes, I believe. Okay, because decks right there, cool. Never thought I'd actually use a ranged weapon with this guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sling sixteen is uh, because he's taken cover. You uh, you miss. Bounces off and the side of this pit. I, I like that idea. I'm going to take cover behind this rocky outcropping as well. Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to use the raised shield symbol. Uh, Graysong. Yeah, uh, I'm going to use Wild Morph, Sprout Claws, Growl Fairly, basically kind of half crouch on hands and feet and scamper towards the grimy trash jenkin um, taking on a very animalistic demeanor um, so I will move here and then I will attack with my wild morph claws uh, the the gem that I used uh, that adds plus one damage and hit is that right? Uh no, uh, plus one to hit and plus a dice of damage. Oh, plus a dice damage. Okay, I'll need to adjust so that. So the uh, keep in mind that it is a um, a uh, it's a talisman, so it's consumable. It's a one-time. Oh, use. oh, then never mind. I will not use that. Um... Uh... 19, uh, yeah, 7 slashing damage, you, uh, crash into this thing. Uh, it can't have cover against you because you're, uh, right beside him. Um, <sighs> you slash into him, tearing, like, your claws get this acid on it, and it just hisses like a weird, uh, otter, mm. maybe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was your move, shift, and attack. Yep, so that's my three. Uh, Mr. LK. Um, LK is going to, for dramatic effect, uh, tell Harvey to fly into the air. Go, helicopter rabbit! And as he flies up dramatically, he will kind of close his eyes and reach out at the one beside Grey Song um, and cast Daze. Uh, yeah, it needs to make a basic will save. Um, it gets a 20 on its will save. My so, god. Uh, what is your Two, DC? Seven, 17. All right, so it succeeds, um, uh, which means it takes half damage. Yep. Uh, and that's four, two, so two damage there. And then uh, he will cast Guidance on uh, Krenari. Okay. Uh, is Guidance a single? It is, yeah limited by uh, cooldown of an hour after a person either does or does ah, not use it. Right. Um, I also thought I had a button for uh, guidance, but I do not. Uh, so, Krenari, who is apparently the slowest in this situation, um, is going to... I haven't looked at their stuff for a while. Uh, it's going to... Uh, it. They are going to cast uh, Ray of Enfeeblement on the grimy trash thing. Uh, plus one to roll because of Guidance. Uh, 20 to hit, which hits. Uh, mm, nice. Then, so, attempt a ranged attack. If you success, they attempt a fort save. 
Uh, it gets a 25, which is a critical success. Uh, the target is unaffected. Uh, that seems like not a great spell. Uh, hmm. Zachary. A lot of level one spells in like <clears throat> and like arcane traditions and stuff are kind of weak. Uh, that was a how many actions was that? That was two yeah, actions. But so when uh, you get later on, they're amazing. Yeah, they are. They'll just move uh, behind this pillar here, not really take cover behind it. Uh, Zachris. So I'll move uh, once there. Uh, I have to. I have to do two moves, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to attempt a tail swipe. Uh, it has the sweep feet. Ooh, so. yes. Uh, so what the sweep thing means is, uh, rather than do damage, you can also, uh, do a trip. A trip. Right. Yep. So I'm going to try to stop it moving. <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep it still. Um, so that is what I am going to do. I uh, need to look up how that works. <clears throat> hey. Uh, you gain a... When you attack with this weapon, you gain a... Oh, actually, what sweep means is uh, it makes wide sweeping or spinning attacks. Uh, if you attack with this weapon, you gain plus one on your attack roll. If you already attempted to target a different target this weapon, uh, this uh, turn. Oh, okay. So it's not a trip type. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is I mean, <laughs> I, I'm going to say that hits and does 10 bludgeoning damage and basically... Still pretty good. <laughs> almost knocks its head off. Uh, it is... Uh, probably unable to survive even another hit like that. Okay. Excellent. Um, anything else on <laughs> turn? That's it. That's all I got. Alright. Uh, the grimy trash Jinkin next to you, Graysong, is going to hiss uh, much like Zachris does uh, and is not going to um, attack you. It's going to faint. And I have to quickly look up how that works again uh, within melee. So against your perception DC, it makes a deception check. Uh, what is your perception? I think it's uh, plus seven. I believe so. Yes, it so is plus seven. Your DC would be 17. Okay. So, uh, so what it, am I rolling? Uh, oh, nothing. it's rolling against it. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Uh, so it's... Uh, you're, you're fooled, but only momentarily. Uh, it sort of claws you with one hand, but actually is clawing you with the other. Uh, mm. The claw comes up. Uh, you are flat-footed to this. So, oh. Oh, jeez. Well, uh, it crits. It's two. Which does, uh, so crits in Pathfinder do double damage, or two dice extra of damage. So you take four damage from that, but uh, oh, it yeah. actually knows where your uh, vitals are. Uh, so it does four more damage, eight in total. Ooh, Ouch, I'm in not great shape. That was not a good round. Ouch. Uh, it's then going to retreat and float behind uh, this <laughs> box over here. Uh, I need to move the status. Uh, the scar t chest trash jinkin. I don't... Sorry, everyone on the uh, stream. I sort of forgot to put the camera in the right place. The scar chest is going to do oh. the same thing. It's going to make a deception against uh, Zachris. Your perception DC is 17, so it fails horribly. Um, doesn't backfire. Doesn't critically fail. Uh, okay. But it will make a swipe against you. Okay. Oh, five for one damage. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, and then it's going to jump down this pit. Uh, about 10 feet down. Okay. Uh, Chotzi. So I can't see that boy no more, right? Uh, the grimy one, you can. It's, uh, just got cover from you. No, I mean the one that went by Zachary. Oh, now. yeah. Can't see that guy anymore. That's right. That jerk. Okay. So, I'll be like, he's retreating, boys. And I'll whip out my, um, scimitar, rapier, and, uh, charge the other one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that would be two actions to get right next to him. <clears throat> I think I'll... Yeah, there's two there, and I can use one action to ready, 
right? Uh, readying is actually you use two actions. Okay. So I'll just taunt him <laughs> furiously from that spot. <laughs> uh, you can make a, uh, uh, what's it called? Intimidation check. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Graysong. Uh, yeah. let's see. One. I will. What is the. I was trying to look it up. It's hard for me to find the specific spells quickly because I'm not as used to this system. Ray of Frost, what is the range of that? Oh, uh, hot tip for spells. There is a ridiculously good Android app called Pathfinder oh. UE Spells. Okay. Uh, there's also the, the wiki. Unfortunately, has all of them. I've got. Unfortunately, I have a, an, a, I, an iPhone. Okay, so I'm in range. I will use Ray of Frost against the grimy trash jinkin. Yeah. So. You see Graysong casting a spell with his uh, claws sort of clicking together. Uh, yep. That hits even with him behind the cover. Uh, 10 cold damage is enough to uh, nice. freeze him in place. He falls backwards and shatters in this gross, oozing pile. Nice. Uh, okay. That was oh, all. Oh, sorry, Grace. Uh, I think there was something else. You have one more action. Amazing taunting that blew him up. I will move back over with the group. All right, Mr. LK. Um, let us see what distance have here. Can I get beside it? I can get beside it with two? It's uh, down. Though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, down about ten feet in the pit, but you can get next to the pit in two. Um, in true wizard fashion, I will use two to go there, and can I make a strike action with my dagger? Uh, you wouldn't have the reach. I think then... Where's Krenari? Krenari's way back there. Yeah. Um... I will... I'll just get a Guidance off on Zachris. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, Zachris, you have, you have Guidance. Uh, Krenari is also going to, uh sort of run up here um, but uh, is unable to do a two action spell so instead is going to cast shield and create a uh, shield in front of himself himself. Uh, Zachris okay. it's cowering um, about 10 feet down okay uh, I am going to jump down and stab it with the sword yeah for sure I'll give you uh, plus one on to hit because okay. it's from above that work. Uh, twelve is not enough. Not enough. All right. Um, yeah, you're squeezing in this pit with it. <laughs> um, can I the my hunt prey uh, feet? Can I use that at any time? Yeah, it's uh, just an action. It. Okay, it's a it's an action. I think would so. a uh, thirteen hit from that guidance? Oh, thirteen would not hit though. Okay. No. Um, uh, yeah, Hunt Prey is uh, just an action. I think you... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to do that, or oh, do you want to sorry. Like, raise your shield? Uh, 14, because you gave him that plus one from being up high. Well, no, I, I added the plus one already. So, I so you can either what... mark him, or you could raise your shield, because next turn you probably won't make three attacks against him. Right. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, well, I'll do my second attack. Um, and what is it at... Uh, five. Minus five, minus unless five, it's agile, uh, in which case it's minus four. It is agile. Okay. So, do I put the bonus to roll negative four? That's right. Okay. Let's try that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. no, okay. Uh, now, now I'll raise my shield. All right. <laughs> so, uh, as you raise this magical shield, uh, yeah. you feel its its power sort of protect you. You feel that it is very sturdy. You also <laughs> feel that it is burning your skin. Ah. Yeah, that's not so good. <laughs> okay. Uh, the shield seems to reject <coughs> you. Uh, the metallic straps tighten and become irremovable. Uh, whenever you take the razor shield action, you take 
one bludgeoning damage from the straps oh, tightening. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. However, uh, you can tell that this is a um, essentially a uh, sturdy shield. So when you use the shield block action, uh, it has uh, hardness 8, 64 hit points, and breakage of 32. Dang. So it is a very, very strong shield. It just doesn't like you very much. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, so I take one bludgeoning. I apologize go. for uh, leading you into like this it. by suggesting that's it. That's all right. No, no, I, I like it. That's, I like curse items. Those are fun. Uh, the grimy trash drink. Uh, grimy trash Jenkin, uh continues to uh, be frozen. The scar trust Jinkin is going to make some slash attacks. Gotcha. Um, uh, first, it's going to try and deceive you, and faint, uh, yeah. failing. It's going to make a attack. Uh, hitting for four damage. Okay, and I'm using the shield. Is that? Uh, no. Do you have the uh, shield block feat? Uh, oh, uh, I do not. Uh, in that case, the shield is only plus okay. two AC. That's right. Okay. Okay. So that'll still hit. Yeah. So yeah. four. Four okay. piercing. Uh, okay. It's gonna make a second attack at minus five. So that would be uh, actually nineteen. Uh, sorry, uh, sixteen. Sixteen will miss. And it did zero damage, anyways. Yeah. Uh, Chauncey. All right. Seeing how uh, Gray Song is not doing the best, um, Chauncey's gonna go over there and be like, "Holy hell! What happened to you?" It That's had like, sh uh, sharper bad. than expected claws. I'm going to use my battle medicine on him. Excellent. Uh, yeah, make me a medicine check. <laughs> Hopefully I don't make it worse than it already is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be appreciated. <laughs> uh, 20. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you heal 2d8. I believe, unless you have any feats that make that better. I uh, do not. Okay. 11 is perfect, actually. That brings me back up to full health. <laughs> Uh, so I think uh, Battle Medicine is two actions. I'm not 100% sure. Or maybe it's just one action. Uh, it just says an action. It's in the thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, last action. Cool. So I'm going to go up, and I'm assuming there's some, like, rubble around, like, um, kind of like the, I guess, the volcanic ash or something. I'll get in there, and I'll, like out of sight of Grey Song, I'm going to like pour some water on it or something to get it nice and muddy, and I'll just kind of like rub it in his wound, and be like, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. You somehow find penicillin. Uh, Grey Song. Yeah, I will... Let's see. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Do I have, like, can I shoot? I can't shoot through them, right? Uh, you can, they just give cover. Uh, plus okay. two. Uh, also, it's in a pit, so you can't shoot from there anyways. And my move is 30, I believe. As an elf, you are fast. I think, let me double check. I can't remember what my move is. Uh... Where is that on the sheet? I should be able to see uh, that. Left-hand side of your front page. Left-hand side. Speed 30. Okay. So, but I can take two move actions, but then a spell is going to cast... Uh, will a cantrip cast cost me one or two? I Depends can't remember. Depends on the spell. On the it's ray, ray of Frost. I That's can't two remember. action. Okay. I'll just get in position in case I need to cast again. Okay. I will get up here. Yeah, take cover behind something. Yeah, actually, I'll I'll take cover behind that. This thing has wall one hit there. point. Uh, okay. <sighs> Produce flame. Uh, Dear God. It makes a uh, so it's got it's apparently a spell attack roll. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought the five was the the spell attack. <laughs> no, that's the the damage. Um, it should actually oh. have the attack roll built in, but if you want to just roll me a d twenty and add your. Uh, yeah. D20 plus 7? Whatever's on your spell page for attack. Yeah. Spell attack roll slash roll. Uh, wow. 
it is a good thing that Zacharis doesn't have eyebrows, because this thing goes up in flames. Uh, you successfully uh, destroy this thing, um, and it's, you know, going for Zacharis' jugular as you sort of burn it to flames, and uh, it sort of just sort of breaks up in this horrible ooze that collects in your boots, Zacharis. If you're wearing boots, I don't know. Yeah. I've got clawed feet. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you don't have weird stuff on your claws. Okay. <laughs> um, in any case, you guys uh, successfully defeat this, and... <laughs> Glob, were these the things that you detected? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they were. Uh, there was a lot more of them, but you guys uh, moved so quickly that they didn't catch up to you. Good thing, too, because I think they're poisonous. <laughs> I'm going to recheck at Grace Dong's wounds. <laughs> or I might be wrong. <laughs> just kind of, like, looking at his eyes to see if they, like, dial it <laughs> or anything. Just like, ah, he's fine. So, uh, <laughs> as you, uh, as Zacharis, as you climb out of this pit, uh, mm -hmm. You actually notice something now that you're looking sort of southwards towards the rest of the group. Uh, mm. Buried under a pile of bones, you see a trident. Ooh. Oh, I will go walk over to inspect said trident. Uh, yeah, this trident uh, has a sort of strange blackish metal uh, for the, uh, the main points of it. Um, mm. I'm going to say as you are, you know... Uh, uh, pit fighter, you would right. recognize this as uh, cold iron. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. This is a right. cold iron. Um, in itself, cold iron doesn't do anything, uh, right. but a lot of creatures have weakness to it, like demons and mm. fey. Exactly. Um, okay. It's uh, decorated oh. with uh, fish bones, sharp shells, and tentacles. Oh, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll pick it up and heft it and kind of test it, do some... I'll uh, see. I'll do a little uh, kind of like a uh, gladiator kata, try and you know try to do some moves and uh, probably not look so good, but <laughs> <laughs> feel good doing it. Does it ping kata. magical? Uh, it does not. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, eight. You're not not looking yeah. so hot. No, I don't look that good, but this probably because I'm I'm kind of beat up a little bit. Yeah, so. it doesn't well, look great, right. but it's effective. Uh, that's right. Zacharias, my buddy, did you manage to get poked by one of those little goo devils? You're kind of moving yes. a little wonky. Maybe the poison's getting to you. Uh, Zacharias, not feel so good. Yes. Yes. And I'll, I'll walk over to Chauncey and show him my wounds. Biggest needle I have. <laughs> Be like, I think this will be. Hold still. Okay. Uh, I'll watch it. Zach will also watch. Like, I'll uh, try to treat. Treat wounds? Yeah. Uh, okay. Make me a medi check. Uh, huh? 20. Uh, Perfect. Uh, you heal 2d8. And. Uh, 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 if Poop. Chauncey, if you guys want to, there Chauncey you can treat you no. for an entire hour Oof. and double that. Probably unnecessary, though. No, not necessary. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, right. So we're pretty close. Uh, yeah. Chong is immune to my battle medicine per day, and Zacharis is immune to my treat wounds. They're two separate. <laughs> they are, yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, do you guys mind if we take a quick uh, five, ten minute break? Please. All okay. right. <clears throat> Welcome back to Pathfinder. Uh, Apotheosis Pathfinder 2E Actual Play Homebrew Planer Campaign. I said it right this time. It's what it counts. Um, <laughs> I missed the automobile sound. Broom, broom, broom. <laughs> uh, you guys are um, 
uh, had just defeated some uh, trash imps, and like I mentioned, it's uh, sort of falling apart. Uh, it's turning into the ground beneath you and sort of like merging into just rot. Um, Get wrecked. So the corpses are gone. Um, you guys, uh, I think in the silence, uh, Graysong, you were going to head to the edge of the radius of the lantern. Uh, that's yeah. actually something I should ask. Who is carrying the lantern? Assume an LK uh, I, think I, have it. I think I still have it. Yeah, yeah okay. it feels like LK did. So in that last combat, none of you left the radius of 50 feet around LK, but you came close. So uh, Zachris and uh, uh, Graysong, you guys would have noticed that the effects seem just a bit fainter at the edges. Mm. Uh, Graysong, as you whisper uh, something at the edge there. Uh, yeah, I whisper in Sylvan, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Uh, you uh, look down at like a puddle, uh, perhaps, and see just a minute reflection. Uh, it nods and then disappears. Okay, I will wander back. Uh, Glob doesn't seem to have noticed. Uh, he's just like, wow, you guys are really cool. You moved a lot. I have never moved in my life. Hey, uh, about... That, that technically is not true. Oh, that's true. You're, I mean, that you're right, but I meant, like, move distances. Hmm. Um, there, uh, I think I, I recognize that the portal hole thing is vibrating. It's, it's that way. It's like, uh, 60 Chauncey lengths. Hmm. Yeah. Is that is that a new unit of measure? Yeah, the it's metric the only chance. Only unit of measure. Let's be fair. So I'm gonna lay down on the ground. <laughs> like, oh, geez, can we flip him? Yeah, to like, I am. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna flip him. Jeez. <laughs> <I'm gonna, laughs> Zachary is gonna take his legs and flip one on. <laughs> so uh, as you progress further, uh, flipping Chauncey, who is getting uh, <laughs> covered more and more in soot throughout this. Um, uh, who has the highest perception? I think Graysong with... Probably me, or or I don't know, maybe Zachris. I got a seven. Plus I got a seven as well, so it's both of us. So the two of you hear something off in the distance. Uh, in the direction you're traveling, um, it sounds like a, uh, a woman's voice. Uh, she is uh, sobbing with frustration. Uh, she is behind some uh, uh, hills to the north um, and seems to be repeating something to herself in uh, 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 what you can recognize as infernal. Mm. But you can't understand it until you get within 50 feet. Zacharis hears female voice ahead. I hear it as well. We should... Should I suppose investigate? Yeah, she continues to sort of. She speaks in a strange tongue. Uh, do any of you speak uh, infernal? No. Nope. nope. I should probably pick that up. But we'll we'll understand it. Like yeah, yeah once, once we, we get close enough. Once you get close enough. <laughs> uh, Metric. So John's totally <laughs> want. <laughs> so how do you totally uh, want to get in um, fifty feet of someone who speaks demonic? Yeah, of <laughs> course. Well, this is devil. Infernal is devil. That's right. That's right. Devil. No, totally different. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can tell that this woman, whoever she is, is uh, around the sort of next corner. Um, how do you want to approach? Like sneak Just up and check her out. Uh, so like a a big. Um, plateau, sort of, a ring of, uh, of spires and trash, um, and she's on the opposite side of it from you guys. Let, let me be a bit of a uh, scout for this. I will actually transform into a, a ferret, <laughs> and it, uh, when you see basically his clothes kind of go with him, and it'll be a stark white arctic ferret. And he will scamper to the top of the trash heap and look over 
beyond into where she is. You okay. really missed the uh, opportunity to, to turn into a trash panda, a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so with pest form, your acrobatics and stealth are plus 10, unless your own is higher. Uh, it is not that high. So uh, which of those two or both do you want? Uh, just a stealth. Okay. Uh, it's not too difficult to get to where she's at. So plus five to that, since I only have a plus five normally. Oh, holy crap, that was a low roll. That was low. Jeez, I'm not well, rolling well. So as you uh, go around this corner, you realize that the surrounding structures are all, like, dark black. So your bright white fur is, like, starkly oh. trans... Uh, yeah. Against the wall. Um, you see a adult woman, uh, reddish skin, um, wearing leather armor, uh, and she's crying while she's working. She's actually fashioning a splint for her right leg, which uh, appears to be bent at a weird angle. Uh, she gasps immediately when she sees you, uh, and raises her hands in a sort of spell thing. Uh, a spell position. Uh, and that's when you notice that her hands bend backwards with their palms on the outside. Hmm. Uh, how do you react to that? I kind of like duck beneath, but kind of still peek over. Uh, she looks something like this. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you hear her calling out in Infernal to you. Uh, you, I presume, are at the sort of edge of the 50 feet. Yeah, just peeking over with my ferret head. Uh, so the rest of you hear... Uh, someone actually she's actually gonna pick up a rock and toss it at you i'll scamper back beneath the the edge yeah so you guys just hear her like definitely notice gray I'll, song and toss a rock i'll lope back over and scamper up onto zachris's sh shoulder presumably now within the radius of the of the lantern i can speak and they will understand me so I will, I will speak and say that uh, I'll, I'll describe what I saw. Uh, wow! I never thought about that. Yeah, I like I'm that. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, you uh, <laughs> squeak out information. Squeak, squeaking, squeaker. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, so I, I have to think because it is a it uh, tongue spell. And I don't think the regular tongue spell would actually do this. Um, but, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. It's funny. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah, hear yeah. Grey Song, but yeah. in like a, like like his voice has Great. been like Great. through Great. helium. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zachary thinks she needs help. I would yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> she vibrates okay. weird like not like you guys or the monsters she's well she is like you guys but you know she's not from this place different place than you the, I want to meet her the only way we will be able to talk to her is the, <laughs> is, is by approaching her with the lantern uh, you hear her you know, like okay <laughs> <laughs> I can't both sweet, speak in a higher pitched voice and do this right, right accent, yeah. oh, so yeah. I'm doing my best, guys. So, this is where you're missing the ball on um, having the voice changer I have. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. It really helps out. That's true. There you go. I want that. I so want that. I totally need that for my animal. Get it. All right. Get it. Uh, I'll uh, send you the thing. I okay. apologize to all viewers. Uh, for what Aaron hath wrought. <laughs> I have to do this now. We will we will grab it after the session. Uh, for certain. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you hear her uh, <laughs> seemingly she's trying to get to her feet, uh, but she cries out in pain. Uh, she's very frustrated, angry, and tearful. So are we approaching her? I <laughs> um, yeah, I'll I'll shift back and, and okay. approach. Nick. Yeah. Okay. Like, out of character, I want to help her, but 
but you you paint some people where they're always like looking at you through their eyebrows, <laughs> like that, <laughs> the last guy. Like this chick is hundred percent evil. <laughs> uh, she uh, is still Zachary. holding a spell as you guys come around. Sorry, Zachris. Is- yeah, so Zachris will approach with no weapons and say, Zachris will help you, and start walking towards her. Uh, do you, uh, okay, do you f- follow close enough that your lantern is... So, uh, yeah, I mean, A, okay, is gonna go with Zachris on the suggestion that she needs help, um, and would be keen to, um, but would definitely bring the lantern with you. Kunari, perhaps this is your, um, area of speciality to be able to convince her that we mean no harm. Yes, of course. Uh, and Kunari will step forward, um... Guidance! Say, we're not... <laughs> Here to harm you. Uh, she'll make a. Uh, he'll make a. They'll make a diplomacy check to do the thing. Uh, ooh, not great. Uh, plus one on this because uh, Kronari has a special feat. Um, monstrous peacekeeper. Uh, and this woman is definitely of a monstrous sort. Um, uh, so this woman uh, sort of rears back and says. Who are you? What is your allegiance? Zachris. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I, I try I to can... picture what the lady's looking at. Like, Grey Song doesn't look the most inviting. Like, he looks yeah. like a predator. He, looks, he was <laughs> brooding. <laughs> we got a seven foot tall, like, Dangerous crocodile man. Six and a half. We have six and a half. <laughs> we have a so crackhead looking Chauncey. We're running out of time a little bit. Um, she is going to sort of be startled for a second and be like, "You've got a bromer. Uh, I can I can understand you. Uh, you what? wear the shield of uh, the Ignal Suzerainty, Mister Zacharis. I want to know a great deal about this place. Are you from this plane? Not from here, no. I'm. Uh, my name is Tsuya of the Bizati Inquiration. What faction are you? Zakas. My... <laughs> what my uh, scaled friend is saying is, where? What do you mean, uh, factions? We've just kind of been thrown here with a very... We don't even know where here is. Well, you're not threshers, are you? Uh, you're not conservators, really, higher art adventurers, so I don't know where you come from. What plane are you? Uh, I'll look at LK. Okay. <laughs> we... I, I think in your parlance, we would most formally come from the material plane. Uh, you're a little quiet if you can move your mic closer. Did material you catch that? material plane. <laughs> you can't be from the material plane. What uh what do you mean? No, I would have told you that the passage here was perhaps impossible, but we seem to have taken part in some form of magical experimentation that perhaps went awry. And here we I are. Don't understand. What part LK of would do you not uh, understand? If she's if she's like interested in it, LK would like walk up. I've taken some fairly concise notes. It, it, what what happened? What and he would just start going into the explanation of the experimentation, like in gross detail. Um, in the meantime, Gray Song is going to sit himself like on some, one of the trash heaps, and he'll start. I'm going to start sketching what I see, including this woman talking with LK. Um, but like the venue of the trash heaps and whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna start sketching. Um, so, yeah, you you sketch everything around. Uh, do you want to make me a crafting check as a? Sure. So, Lasse, uh, what was your name again? My name is Tsutsoya, and Tsutsoya. I'll I'll spell it out in the chat. Uh, Tsutsoya. Did you manage to take like a fall or something? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh... Alright, because your hands are right fucked up. 
I, I could take care of that for you. <laughs> Your face is right fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fair. Lots of fair. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna take out my like for my uh, healer's kit and be like, "Do you mind?" Please look at my leg. If you are, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna look around and be like, "This is completely medical. I have no interest in this lady." In case you're watching. <laughs> and then I'll be like, alright. And then I'll like go down <laughs> toward her knee. <laughs> you feel a little bit of fire on the back of your neck. But uh, yeah, her leg is definitely broken. Uh, she was trying to fashion a splint out of like trash she's found around. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah. If you, do you, you want to make a medicine check, try and treat her wounds. She'll uh, tell you the story as you do so. Uh, 14 is, I think it's DC 15, so you don't get any better than what she's already accomplished. Um, but you do sort of like... Oh, could know. I use my um, healer's gloves, the ability on it? Oh, yeah, I think... Oh, what do the healer's gloves do? I think They, they just automatically you. heal. Unfortunately, uh, they just heal gloves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, yeah, you cast... Uh, you can sue the willing adjacent creature's wounds, restoring 2d6 plus 7 hit points. Uh, yeah... Absolutely. She'll... As soon as you realize you can't do anything more for her, uh, you can cast uh, the heal with your healer's gloves and 14 hit points. Uh, nice. Yeah. You hear the bones sort of reform and refix. Uh, she's going to have a nasty scar on the side, but it's uh, it's perfectly healed. Uh, she... Chompy was here. Yeah. <laughs> she tests it out and she's like, oh, magical healing. Good. I glad. Uh, you see, I am from the Incoration, like I said. Uh, me and the first scout, Garrus, we were uh, investigating a, uh, a new plane. Uh, I do not remember what it is called. He had the roamer, you see. Uh, we were attacked. A giant bird came from the sky. Uh, this plane is made of a giant tree. Uh, multiple trees that seem to go down infinitely. I fell when we were attacked. I'm sure Garrus thinks that I am uh, dead by now, but I was saved by this bird woman who said that I was not allowed in her plane, and she threw me out here. I broke my leg on the fall itself. Um, I got attacked by those horrible little imps, and, well... I'm glad you have a roamer because now I can get home. Uh, uh, if that is alright with you. You, you keep what? saying that word. Yes. What is a roamer? Your lantern. Do you not know what a roamer is? How did you get to this plane? I'm sure we'll uh, figure that out sometime, but we're not entirely sure. LK would look super shocked that she didn't absorb everything he deeply explained in terms of the exact <laughs> details of the experiment, and he would go right back into the explanation. <laughs> I, will, I will gesture towards LK like it was obvious to, to Grey Song, but... You can, you can tell that this woman is not... She's not dumb, but she's not an astrophysicist, so... <laughs> She's just kind of a little confused. Um, she uh, she explains that um, uh, uh, you see, roamers are is tools that us planeswalkers use. Um, they allow travelers to pass pass between the planar rifts in these planes. Um, it's what is protecting you right now. They have a magic that tries to keep well keep its attuned people alive. If you wish, I can show you how to use it. Absolutely. And he would hold the lantern out. <laughs> well, you see, the... So, I yeah, myself. Does she, does she look like she has any kind of ill intent toward it? Uh, like yeah. taking it. Make me a perception check, because uh, perception is the insight of Pathfinder. Oh, perfect. Oh. Nice. No, as she's sort of wiping the tears away, you realize that she's... Uh, very indebted to you guys. Like, she's explaining that, like, sh she doesn't have the tool that opens portals to her home. So she is trapped here if you guys don't help her. Um, she is absolutely trying to 
be nice and help and doesn't have any ill intent to you guys at all. Um, do you, uh, do you tell anybody? No. I... Okay. <laughs> They're not actually stabbing her. I'm like, huh? Uh, she's like the, um, for the lantern, it's quite an old variant. Uh, we have much stronger ones back home. Uh, you twist the uh, the top of the lantern like a uh, a tuning. Uh, I'm, oh. I just realized that in my notes, I wrote it like tuning a radio, but she wouldn't know what a radio is. So oh. <laughs> um, she basically explains that like you have to slowly twist it until you get the right frequency, and then the uh, the lantern will project a sort of illusion of the area in the next plane over. Um, whatever this planar rift will link to uh, is where it will send you. Uh, and she explains uh, mm -hmm. the other side of the rift. Uh, the rift is just up this hill. Uh, the other side of it is on the edge of a uh, tree branch. It is quite sturdy, but again, we... I was uh, thrown here by that bird woman did not want me anywhere near. So we need to make use of this lantern near one of these rifts. Yes, exactly. What? Who, first, I have many questions. Of course. Who, who makes these lanterns? Uh, well, it is very difficult to make the lanterns. Uh, there is a city that I know of where they make lanterns. I am from what we call the incoration, the Bezati incoration. Uh, we go through planes and uh, mark them down, explore and document. Um, we are given them as agents. They, they, the incoration gives it to us. How many of these planes have you documented? Myself, only a few, a few dozen, but we know of hundreds. Hundreds. And those are only the ones that people like I can survive. Uh, luckily, we have many uh, fire elementals on our team who can go and explore many overheated places. Hmm. Yeah. Will the will the Romer protect us in a similar fashion as it does from the poison of this area or miasma of this area from things like fire on these other planes? Uh, only the stronger ones will. The, this one looks quite damaged. It can probably only output a little bit of protection. You are still harmed by if I were to cut you or punch you, it would still hurt you. But small things, no, things I, in air, will not. As I uh, puff out my <laughs> chest. <laughs> um, after they started like talking about all the intricacies of this item and all the math and nerd stuff, Chauncey would have zoned out <laughs> <laughs> making her like a crutch of some sort so I won't have to carry her. Uh well actually with your healing, uh you heal it enough that it's it's fine. It's a little ginger. She'll have trouble like she'll have minus five speed, but uh she's perfectly fine. But you can still make her a crutch and force her to use it. We <laughs> which I will do. <laughs> we encountered a being that uh glob do you wish to introduce yourself? No. <laughs> He's a bit shy. Uh... <laughs> do you do you know the nature of such beings? We encountered him in one of these pits. She's like, I have heard of ooze elementals, but I have never met one. Hello, Glob. I am Tsusoya. And Glob is just like, they think you're pretty. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I swear. I think Grace Song, Grace Grace Song gets a little bit of a twitch at that, kind of an uncomfortable feeling, <laughs> kind of just like I like it, kind of it pains him for a moment, and then <laughs> and then goes back to kind of sketching in his book. Zachris thinks you're not scaly enough, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Zacharis isn't interested in a, a smooth-skinned female. 
no protection at all. <laughs> Those kids are not big enough to birth or That's right. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, yes, Tatoya um, stands and says, uh, if you are ready, I can take you to the next plane. But I was attacked by those imps. Uh, have you seen them? They're small, made of trash and ooze. We did encounter two of those. Uh, even with a hurt leg, I could only take down three or four. Or, sorry, not even with. With my hurt leg, I could only take three or four. I had to end up running. Uh, and you notice on her um, hips, uh, she's got these sort of strange... Uh, a very thin curved blade um, as well. It's almost a sickle, but it's sort of long and extended hmm. and uh, as well as a number of daggers. Uh, Have I seen a blade like that? Uh, you've... It's not so alien that you wouldn't know how to use it, but it is right. definitely a style that is unusual. Unfamiliar? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's cool. But you're not... Okay. Yeah, you've never seen... Be impressed. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Jack is it. asking because he's like, this lady's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> There's some <Yeah>. easy loot. <laughs> feel free if you guys want to attack Satoya. Feel free. Session will or the adventure <laughs> will not go very far. <laughs> At least learn how to use the machine first. That's right. Um, um so I guess uh, one thing we'd be interested to know are you are you suggesting that we we return you to your plane? Or that well, we simply jump to an adjacent plane. How does the geography of this landscape work? It's it is adjacent. It is like each plane is a uh, bubble in a giant bubble bath. This will connect what? us to uh, the bird plane, and then uh, we will go back to uh, Dinmaradum, which is not my home plane, but it is close. Uh, the next plane over is my home plane. So you're saying you can help us learn how to use this little lantern thing? Yes, of course. If you can bring me home, I will uh, happily introduce you to the uh, the Encoration. Perhaps they could give you one of your own. What are you? What do you do? You say you're here against your will. What do you plan to do? Well, perhaps uh, the little one here with the amazing eyebrows could figure a way to get us home <laughs> and i'm gonna like look at you with like wide eyes and be like <laughs> <laughs> i have oh. never heard of anyone getting to the material plane from here I, but if you come to Yafra, uh, my settlement uh, then aliska can help you there is a purpose and a design to us being here which is yet to be revealed um, that is a what... strange thing you say. That is ominous as fuck. <laughs> if we assist you in getting back to your plane, would you be able to produce a, or would your people be able to produce one of these higher quality roamers that would allow us more protection and more power? Yes, of course. This is, uh, this is like an iPhone 4. It is <laughs> very outdated. She doesn't say that. Um, this is... We have much more powerful ones. It Do you is... have any open source versions? <laughs> uh, I believe Mozilla, but no, no, no we don't. <laughs> um, and uh, is there, uh, you say you've been exploring these planes, is there a uh, any cartographic information or maps that would lay out? In the Ephra, yes. We have many maps, but I do not have them here. <laughs> It would appear for the time being, then, that our paths lie in the same place. I'm, I'm not making the Google Maps joke, I promise. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I, would be, I would greatly appreciate if you could help me. But I worry. This, this bird plane is uh, dangerous. I don't know how we will pass through it, and we will have to climb a great deal to reach... The portal to Dinmaradu. It certainly seems like this plane carries its own dangers with us, and at least at the end of this journey, there seems to be a, the promise of some aid to us. It seems an improvement. Uh, 
So, Glob will also pick up and be like, uh, I've been checking around and I don't sense any other holes. I think this is the only one. At least at your height. Can, can you fly, Tatoya? And Tatoya's like, mm, no. Damn. Oh, uh, a swear word. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> you no doubt um, got that from Chauncey's so memories. <laughs> I've never said a swear word in my life. <laughs> Watch it. So, at, at the mention of uh, climbing... I'm pretty sure that's distinctly untrue. <laughs> Are you calling me a liar? Um, yes. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, so, at the, at the mention of climbing, can I, like, uh, I guess... Um, take stock of our equipment do we have like rope um any kind of climbers kits around us like between the group uh in the group i don't think any of you have any climbers kits. i think you all have sort of the default class packages uh i will have to look it up but uh you guys can definitely spend some time looking for gear in the uh the trash heaps that's yeah true. that's where i was going with that um, I'm climbing if, we, if we can't find something could I use this giant heap of trash and craft something? Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, make me a first, a, maybe a perception check. Uh, one of you, at least. Yeah, I'd bring it up, be like, well, if we're going to be climbing, um, pointing toward, uh, Krenari and LK, be like, some of us wouldn't be too proficient in this. Maybe we need some, like, rope, some hooks. <laughs> Maybe uh, some straps. I'll start looking around. So yeah, Zachris, you you find some stuff. Um, uh, you find a couple like good pythons. I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but like mm -hmm. climbing things. Uh, LK, you said you had rope. Actually, I think all of you have rope in your uh, boxes. I know, but, yeah. Um, or at least you know. Unless it's in like the adventures. Yeah, pack I think. Or whatever. I think the adventures pack has it. Has rope. Gotcha. Okay. Um. But uh, you do find uh, at least some some strong um, fibrous something, uh, maybe a rope that's a uh, made of people, not people, but <laughs> like wow, I got skin. dark quickly. Yes, uh, like a, a, an animal skin rope, like something <laughs> weird. As long um, as it's not lizard folk skin, that's all. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one thing you do find that is interesting is a little. A uh, jade figurine, a cat figurine, made of jade. You think it would be worth, you know, at least a little bit of something? Is um, it magical? Are you? Yeah. If you're still casting magic on it, it is in fact magical. Oh. Uh, it's about thumb sized, uh, made of jade. Cool. It's a cat. May I look at it? <laughs> oh. Uh, who did I find it? Uh, yeah, you did. You did okay. find it. Yeah, you okay. can. If you I'll, want to I'll it. hand it to Grayson. Oh yeah. Yeah, Grayson, do you want to make me nature? <laughs> yeah. I feel like Zachris is looking for something very specific, and he tosses it bosses over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, probably. I was like, eh. <laughs> uh, so this thing is—it's uh, <laughs> not unknown to druids. Um, as your druid, uh, it's. A different style, like artistic style, than the ones that you're used to. But this is another talisman. It is a, essentially, uh, if you're trained in acrobatics, you can attach it to your armor. And as a free action, you can cast uh, a sort of a version of Feather Fall on yourself. Uh, for one minute after you activate it, you treat falls as 20 feet shorter. And you are not flat-footed when you balance. Uh, narrow surfaces, uneven ground, not difficult terrain for you. So, 20 feet shorter is going to help us a lot when we're falling off this giant mountain. <laughs> which, of, which, of us, which of us has acrobatics, though? I do. I do. Any, anyone else? Uh, I can see if Kunari has it, but I doubt it. Uh, Kunari is not trained in acrobatics. Alright, so. I guess I'm, I'm holding on to it then. <laughs> By default. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just got a plus seven. 
Are you, are you trained in it, though? Yeah, I'm very bendy. Okay, so he's also trained oh, in it. Oh, well, you're then awesome. you're trained it. Here, I'll uh, hand him the cat, then. Um, you also find, it might not be particularly helpful, but you find a uh, levered crowbar, Zachris. Uh, it's... Uh, basically, it's a tool that uh, when you're forcing open an object, a uh, crowbar makes it easier. Uh, this is a oh, levered yeah. crossbow, so it gives you... Crowbar, rather. Uh, so it gives you plus one to athletics. Okay, to yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that, um, since I've got good athletics. And, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a upgraded tool. Yeah. Well, okay. while this is going on and Chauncey is fashioning people ropes, um, <laughs> uh, I want to just pick uh, Satsoya's brain on uh, the inscriptions on the ring that I have on me. She looks at them and I do not make anything like this. Huh. Not That's... a language you've ever seen. No, but. Let me look closer. Uh, she sort of doesn't touch the ring, but like takes the, the necklace part of it and uh, holds it close to the lantern. Uh, and she's like, uh, why haven't you lit in this lantern? <laughs> if I'm being honest, we didn't know it could be lit. Oh, Go yes. It... Love in it too, so. Um, so at this point, I'm going to uh, pop out the whole identification of this this lantern. Uh -huh. um, it uh, has two functions. One is it can cast light inside itself. Uh, and the second function is that it uh, can allow you to pass through a sphere or pass through a rift. Rift. Um, uh, uh, up to 10 creatures can attune to it at once. So something you guys don't know is that you guys have actually attuned to this item. Uh, uh -huh. Did I say a tune? I wrote a tune when I meant invested. I've been playing too much 5e. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. up to 10 yeah, people so. can invest in it. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, she casts light. Uh, it sort of like glows inside of Glob, creating this sort of purplish hue around. And Glob is like, ooh, that tickles. <laughs> That's weird. I like it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she looks at it closely and it's like, no, I do not... It it looks like a lot of the runes that are on the... Uh, the roamers themselves. At least the tools made to make the roamers. Aaron, that is the biggest mug I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and <So>. that is... <laughs> that is like a shrinking spell, apparently. <laughs> so that her perspective uh... is really weird. <laughs> I made mention that I was copying down the Aquin that we had and the various kind of pieces of that language that we were down. Uh, I would also like to, I'm going to jot down uh, on separate kind of like informational cards for myself the um, the symbols that are on those that she just referenced having some similarity. Okay. Uh, so as you guys are inspecting these things, you notice uh, at the very, the top of this sort of precipice hill has a, a ring of spires around it. Uh, where Tsutoya says the portal is. Um, and in up there, there is uh, a numerous, like, quite a number of piles of things uh, up there. But as you uh, sort of step up around some of these spires to uh, investigate it, it um, something else moves behind it. Uh, Tsutoya notices and is like, oh, shit, it's more of those trash mobs. <laughs> Will you help me take care of them? I hate having to clear those before engaging bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I felt like I had to. Well, no, no, yeah, that, that's... I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't mean to uh, put you down or anything, but you're kind of messed up. Uh, do you think you can do battle? I will let you stay up in front. I feel my sword arm is strong. Well, I'm only saying it because perhaps we can avoid <coughs> confrontation and just get to where we need to go. Uh, it takes ten minutes for the lantern to work, so I worry we will not have that time. Mick, is there any sort of difference in the type of of junk that is piled up here? 
Um, uh, not really. Like, uh, there is, um, a statue that has sort of fallen over, um, uh, a couple braziers, um, but nothing that is specifically stands out as interesting to you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, one of the piles is just huge, though. It looks like it, whatever it is, the portal keeps opening up and pouring more things on it. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, do you guys want to step up and investigate that uh, area? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'll ask her, is there a significance to the portals that open up and deposit deposit this res uh, this um, refuse? I do not know. I've never been here before. I've heard of portals that some planes use as trash heaps. Uh, but... I have never been in one of them, but Aliska would know if we get to Iefra. Hmm. Uh, but yes, I definitely... Do you see? There and there. And she points out uh, some of the hills uh, behind them are these creatures. They're hiding. Hmm. Well, they seem maybe to... like a few of us go do the little lantern thing while the other ones set up an ambush. Well, it's... I, mean, I don't want to hurt them, but if they do show up, I don't want to give them a chance to hurt us. I do have some magic I tried on them. I do not think they are sentient. But... Well, let us try. I think they will not give us enough time to complete this ritual. Yeah, I, I, out of character, I'm just like, okay, who wants to do a stealth with me? Yeah. I'm doing... <laughs> who wants, yeah, who wants to make a stealth check? I'll do a stealth check. Okay. Uh, roll me. Roll it. Uh, nice. nice. Uh, would this be our initiative if we do get in combat? It will be, yes. Okay, so I'll roll it for then. I'll just be setting up at the moment. Okay. Uh, well, in the meantime, uh, because Tsutoya has pointed out the uh, particular <coughs> things, I will uh, have you guys roll me initiative. Uh, and Grey Song, I'll use that uh, 25 for you. Or 24. Okay. Turn 24. Uh, adding initiatives for NPCs is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just sitting there yelling that I'm quiet. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> pay attention to Shonse. Uh, Krenari will make a stealth. Uh, no, Krenari will just make initiative. Uh, sorry, a lot of creatures I need to put in here. Adding. This guy got a 17. This guy got a 16. A 15. This guy got a massive 10 on his. Uh... Yep. Alright. Sort and start and. Battle music. Uh, Tsuya is incredibly fast. Oh, yeah. Uh, she is going to speed up in front of you guys, seeing that uh, your stealth didn't work because they were perfectly observing you. Uh, she moves 25 feet because she has minus 5 and normally moves uh, at a 30. She rushes up to this agile uh, creature and attacks with her curved blade. Uh, 29 with 8 piercing damage. Nice. Uh, Zachris. Oh, let's see. So these are piles, right? And they're kind of hidden behind? Yes. Those, uh, sort of gray things with circles in the bottom of them. They look actually quite, um, uh, precarious. Uh, okay. you can probably push them over. Oh, okay. Um,. Let's see. Uh, 
So could I push it without it affecting Soya? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. So I will move there, and then yeah, I'll try to shove or push. What? What do I? Uh, it would just be a acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Athletics. 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 Oh, oh, that's one. I was like, that's a bad acrobatics. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Wave. Yeah. Okay. Better. Uh, mm-hmm. Thirteen yeah. is enough. Uh, okay. I assume you push it in this direction. Yes. Correct. Uh, I will change the aura to white to say that it's been pushed. Uh, it gets to make a ref- reflex save. Uh, it succeeds. Uh, is that critical? That is not a critical. Um, but it succeeds and takes half damage. Uh, yeah. So that is three damage on it. Okay. Uh, it just hisses as it uh, gets wounded in it, stuff in its wounds. So that was second action? Yeah. So I will. Um, oops, hold on. That's weird. Hold on. Maybe I. There we go. All right. <laughs> And then I'll move. Uh, I'll move beside her. All right, uh, Gray Song. Okay. Oh, uh, we guess Wild Morph being what it is, where I can only cast it once, uh, which means I can only get one cat combat with it. I will cast instead Ray of Frost on um, the Agile Trash Shinkin. Okay. Oh, I just realized you guys can't see the auras on any of these. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. That's all right. Uh, Ray of Frost, that is a 20, is going to hit. Eight Cold is going to freeze it all the way. Uh, it screeches as it dies. Yeah, when he, nice. he'll he he'll stretch out his hand, his his hood goes back, his, wind, his hair whips back in the wind, and a chilling blast issues from his hand and freezes the thing solid. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... It's frozen. You, uh, Tatsoya looks at your wound or your growth for the first time, and you see her eyes sort of look shocked for half a second before she gets back yeah. into battle. Yeah, and that's a good point. <laughs> like, since his his at least arms will be exposed as he outstretched, you will see, like, you know, on one of his arms, like, almost bark-like growth uh, kind of creeping up his arm. He will sort of consciously, uh, self-consciously pull his sleeve back down after casting. All right, uh, El- so <laughs> lady with backwards hands thinks you're weird. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, LK will take note of Graysong's bark arms. <laughs> Fascinating. A, a physical manifestation of primal magic, and then he will look across at the... I guess I'm going to have to get range first, so let's talk about... I just want to double check. Uh, my total range on reduce is. Uh, I knew I was going to forget these ranges. I looked them up. Oh my god, what's the range on reduce flame? 120 feet? 120 yeah. feet, okay. Uh, your mic is also pretty far away. Is this better? That is better. Uh, so these guys would all be sort of behind cover. I'd say plus two cover for them. Uh, can movement get me out of cover on any of them? Uh, on the the upper one, if you were somewhere around here, or even even just the movement up to here. Um, yeah, if I can get, I mean, if that twenty five feet roughly there, somewhere in here. Yeah. Will get me there. a clear shot at it. You're also snapping to corner instead of center, so it's hard to tell. Um, but yeah, you can move up that way. Uh, kind of running out of time, so. Yeah, and then I'll cast produce flame. How do I get this to go as a cast? Do we know how to do that, or just? Uh, it's not like roll twenty where it just has a. Yeah, you have to like manually put it in. Uh, 23 hits, uh, for sure. Firing over Zachris in, into this uh, burst. Uh, s- uh, seven fire damage. Didn't crit success, but did uh, sear off a lot of gross flesh. Nice. Uh, so that was a move and two actions. Uh, yep. The bleary, bleary Trash Jenkin is going to fly over to this one and push this uh, thing down on you. 
Uh, I'd like Zacris and Tsoya to make me reflex saves. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, that is a success, and that Ooh. is apparently a zero. That can't be right. Yeah, let me, that's kind of weird. Let me open up her sheet. <laughs> uh, my my scripts are not foolproof. Oh, okay. she crit succeeds. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so you, she takes nothing, and you take half of, you take zero. Yeah. All right. Uh, then its last movement is going to be to move over Yo. Uh, Krenari is going to rush up next to Graysong and cast Days on the closest guy. Uh, he's going to make a will save... Uh, that is only a 12, so a success. Uh, a failure, rather. Takes uh, four mental damage. Uh, and... Stunned one? Uh, no, only a crit failure is stunned one. Mm -hmm. uh, the ratty trash jinkin is going to huck stuff at uh, Zacris. Okay. Actually, first it's going to float over to this one here. And reaching around is going to uh, huck at Zacris. Okay. Uh, that is a 26. Uh, dealing, it does deal one point of damage, because oh. even if it has uh, negative... It kills me for a woman, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does get one damage. Uh, it's going to make a second attack. Uh, this will be minus five, so 22 minus five. Does... 17 more hit, still. <laughs> uh, so one more point of damage. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, don't see. Five. That's three movements. Yep, all three movements. Right at it. Just going. Oh, <laughs> oh I realized once I got there, I left my slippers behind, <laughs> and I'm just gonna freak out and stay there. Uh, so yeah, let me just see what spell she's um, got. Is it fair to assume we had our weapons at the ready? Yes, for this one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh. So Soya is going to cast magic weapon on herself. Hmm. Uh, so she just sort of innately uh, casts something. She runs the back, which is her palm, against the uh, uh, sword blade. And uh, she's going to just sort of run forward. Okay. Uh, Zachris. Alright, I will move. Ah, crap, it's down again. See. Ah, it's not. What are you looking? For? I'm trying to do the the Q, and it's not. Uh, you have to pick it, pick up there the token, and hit. Yeah. Q okay. In so I have to pick it up first. Okay, that's that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so I'll move. Um, hmm, Twenty-five there. Let's see, uh, that. Trident doesn't have reach, does it? No. Okay. All right. So yeah. So I have to move. Uh, well, I don't want to move. Uh, I'll move there actually, okay. um, <clears throat> on the other side of her, and then um, attack the uh, bleary eye. Bleary. Uh huh. Uh, with the uh, gladius. All right. Uh, twelve is not enough. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Goes wide. Uh, Grey Song. Yeah, uh, I will cast uh, Ray of Frost on that Jinkin. Actually, right. is he going to have cover? It will from the from the All pile. right, so instead, I will go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's still going to have cover. From, uh, plus one from the uh, enemies. Or allies, rather. What do you mean, plus one from the allies? Uh, well, sorry, I don't know where you're ending up, but your allies will give it cover. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to see if there's a spot where I could get, where I could have sort of an angle on it. Um, I think pretty much anywhere that I can get will... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well, maybe. So I could probably go right there. Yeah, I can't like tell if attacking the ratty guy. Uh, I was thinking about that one. Yes, I think that gives me a clear line of fire. Yeah, I'd say so. All right. So 
Nope. Uh, but doesn't matter. Goes yep. wide. <coughs> yep. Uh, so that was two actions. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ray of Frost is two, yeah. Yep. Uh, LK. Um, LK is going to... Uh, on the... Where is... <laughs> no rush, but we're uh, running a little of time. Uh, so we'll just go Magic Missile. And I'm gonna oh, target nice. the higher. I'm gonna target the higher health. Okay. Wow. Do I have to do that? Do I have to do that three times? Uh, I think you do because it. You can cast it either. Uh, One, two, or three action. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's just the one action version. Okay, so just keep recasting it three times, yeah. and I'll say they'll be on the same one. Okay, so two, four. four, and four. Nice. Ten damage. Uh, yeah. You just destroy like. It's wounds. It loses a wing and is uh, just flopping around, hissing. Uh, Tsoya is like, you are good fighters. This should be simple. Uh, it's going to respond by uh, ducking alongside to, to uh, 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 faint on Zacharis. Uh, it succeeds. Yeah, it succeeds. And stabs at you uh, with a sharp trash, doing two plus sneak attack. So four damage. Four, all right. Uh, it's going to try a second attack. This will be at minus four because it's agile. So 22 oh, still hit. Still hit, yeah. Damn. Uh, for uh, seven, seven damage. Okay. All right. Uh, and it ends its turn by hissing at you. Uh, okay. So, Chauncey. So, yeah? only uh, I can sneak attack once around. Oh, is sneak attack only once around? I thought in Pathfinder it wasn't. Um, Let me double check that. Uh, the the stat block definitely doesn't say anything about it, like the the monster stats that have sneak attack. Um, yeah, no sneak attack is however many attacks. No limit. Uh, if you strike a creature, okay, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so the bleary trash chicken is gonna hiss at you, uh, Chauncey. You notice that. Uh, this ratty trash jinkin that you came close to, uh, it hid behind this large, uh, thing. Uh, the large thing is going to, uh, start moving. Move. Uh, it okay. unfurls its wings and reveals itself to be a big oozing heap. Uh, it mm. begins its turn, uh, by... <laughs> Uh, taking three actions to extrude a slippery grease from its ventral glands to coat the floor under it. And in a five foot... That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> uh, I do the same, because that is huge. Uh, so it's, uh, it oozes out around. Uh, the Jenkins seems to be unaffected by this, uh, but you are essentially on uneven ground. Uh, to, let's see, uh, to pass around it, or to leave a square with it, you have to make a balance acrobatics check. Uh, so that's its turn. Uh, Krenari is me. Uh, Krenari will, uh, cast Ray of Enfeeblement. Oh, no, she doesn't have any more daily uses of that. Uh, she will cast a... Days on the guy who has been hurt some more. Uh, her, the ratty trash jinkin will do. It gets a uh, 11 on its will save, so it takes the full four, but didn't critically fail. Uh, the ratty jinkin is going to uh, step here uh, to flank Zachris. Uh, and it's going to sort of avoid Tatsoya and make some stabby stabs. Uh, 25 Maybe. to hit for... Uh, 27 to hit. Actually, what's your AC? 17? 17. This yeah. is a crit. You take two piercing damage from the crit. Two. All right. Uh, plus another three, so five. Okay. Uh, All right. Then it misses with its last attack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chauncey, this heap uh, looks at you. What do you do? Um, besides make my own puddle, I would like to 
You said I need to make an acrobatics to move? Uh, yes. I will do, I'll start by doing that. All right. So I'm going to tiptoe. Uh, yeah, you succeed, just barely. Over to this stinger. And I'm going to try to save the uh, weird lady. Uh, yeah, she'll flank with you. So that does give me the flat-footed condition, right? Yes. It has minus two AC to you. Uh, sorry, it gives it the flat-footed condition. Uh, wow. You crit. Uh, it had four hit points. You, <laughs> like, slice it in half <laughs> with a piercing weapon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just hit it like a sewing needle, just it, rapidly, just da, 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 all the way down. I'm imagining like how in Princess Mononoke they like throw, they pull an arrow and it like takes a guy's head off. <laughs> nice reference. Thank you very much. Uh, so that was yeah, movement one attack. Uh, anything on your last turn? I would like to, with all the goo still on it, flip it around and try to hit this uh, guy next to me. The uh, second attack. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, 13 is not going to hit. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, Soya is going to look at you, Zachris, and sort of, are you okay? I, <laughs> I don't have any more <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forbid you from attacking my friend! And casts Forbidding Ward on uh, the ally and the enemy. Uh, so you and this monster, you get plus one AC against all of its effects. Okay. Uh, it's then going to... She's then going to... Uh, flank around this way. Giving you... Uh, giving you flanking bonus. Flank. Okay. What is it? Uh, because it is flat-footed, it has minus 2 AC. Okay. Right. Uh, I don't know if sneak attack damage doubles in a crit. I will have to look that up. Okay. So that adds two to my roll, is that right? Uh, no, it's uh, you... it's got minus my... two AC. Okay. So oh, got it, got it. Got it. Uh, uh, that hits. Back. Five damage as you slash through it. Second attack. Oh, I'll take. Yeah. Um, uh, that does not hit. That does not hit. And uh, third attack is gonna be um, minus eight. Yeah. And if I raise my shield, then. It'll do Take one point of damage point. to you. <laughs> and you have two hit points. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a risk. Yeah, it is a risk. Uh, although, if it hits you, it'll probably do two damage. So Yeah, true. True. Uh, I'll just I'll sit there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Graysong. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to finish that one off. That's on Zachris, uh, Zachris Duck. I will. Okay. Actually, I don't need the deck from here. No, I just color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seventeen is gonna hit, and nine damage is going to take it the fuck out. Nice. nice. Uh, however, the oozing he heap is still up and yeah. angry. I do not know what that is, but it should be stabbed. Uh, anything else, Grayson? I only have one action left, so actually, uh, I think I'll go back up here behind cover. Sounds good. Uh, LK. Um, LK is going to. Just want to double check. It's one action. Uh, LK is going to move uh, somewhat closer. Uh, he will use two actions to get within 5, 10, 15. And then he will uh, shield himself. Okay. Um, so, the oozing heap is going to go. Uh, the oozing heap uh, opens up its uh, maw, which takes up most of its body and yeah, most of its stomach. Uh, you can now see as it rears through one digestive tract today. <laughs> I don't want to make it two. <laughs> as it uh, rears up, it's uh, you can see that it's definitely some kind of giant version of one of these imps. Uh, it's going to start by trying to bite you, Chauncey. 
Uh, that is that a crit? Twenty nine, I think. Uh, that's a crit. Seventeen. <laughs> uh, so you take uh twelve piercing damage plus a deadly d ten. Mm. So twenty oh. piercing damage as it chops you to fuck. Uh, yikes. I'm at one. <laughs> oh, at least you're at one. one. Uh, yeah. As its second action, it's going to see, because it actually has, uh, well, it actually doesn't have all-around vision, but everything does. It's going to squirt slime at LK. Uh, that is going to miss. And uh, then it's going to move. And it moves pretty fast for its size. It shuffles around this way. Dang. Uh, Krenari is going to uh, cast uh, Angelic Halo on themselves. Uh, you see them, their uh, uh, tattoos on the back sort of glow, and they uh, speak some angelic words, giving them bonus to uh, healing. <laughs> Uh, then is going to pass, uh, cast a two-action heal on, uh, well, who does it want to cast a two-action heal on? Chauncey or Zachris? They're both at yeah, yeah. two and one, respectively. <laughs> exactly. So either uh, one, do either of you have dice. more ranged attacks? Uh, Chauncey does. I have zero ranged attacks. Chauncey also has a capacity to heal beyond, so mm. if he gets if he oh. gets Chauncey up and he survives, yeah. Chauncey can heal Zachary. Zachary can. Yep. Okay. Uh, Krenari will cast on Chauncey. Uh, you heal nine healing. Um, that is. Uh, oh, if I'm healing a living creature, increase by an additional eight. So you do heal an additional eight. Uh, so that was all three and Chauncey. So I'm assuming that ooze is still around me. The goo that he popped. Yes, out. that green circle on the floor is the uh, the ooze. So if I wanted to walk to Zacharis to heal him, it's another acrobatics. Yes. Awesome. I'm gonna walk toward you with like bandages and like <laughs> a salve of some kind, but I'm probably gonna trip and just stab you with it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know which his true attention was. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here we go, boys. Good luck. I'm calling the fail already. Well, <laughs> all right. I need to look up what uneven ground. Uh, it's an area unsteady enough. You need to balance. See, acrobatics or risk falling prone. Uh, depending on the DC, uh, you are flat footed on uneven ground. So that's one thing that I didn't know. Uh, you, each time you are hit by an attack, fail a save, you have to make a reflex safe uh, on it as well. Uh, so, long story short, uh, you don't move anywhere mm. with that action. Uh, but you don't fall prone, because it wasn't a crit fail. You just spend a, uh, a, an action doing, like, the cartoon, like, trying to Running regain on your to balance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> uh, yes, second... Second action? Try um, it again? Well, my um, battle medicine, that's uh, one action, right? I don't know. You've. Yeah, I posted it once. Like. Yeah, try post it again. Or did it not say? It doesn't say. Okay. I'll look it up. Uh, battle medicine is one action. Okay, so I could still potentially walk. Yeah, give it another shot. Alright, here we go. Nice! Mm. Uh, yeah, you get up to Zachris and uh, roll me 2d8. Uh, I need to do oh, a yeah, uh, medicine check. DC. It's not Ooh. a fail fail. Not a fail fail. <laughs> so that's a zero, I think? Heal zero? Yeah, it just doesn't work. Okay. All right, uh, Soya is going but, to. Um, before my turn's over, okay. did we um, come to a consensus on what I was able to create with my? Um... Well, we only have ten minutes late. Uh, okay, left that's here. fair. Uh, right. Soya is going to uh, double move 
uh, 60 feet so she can get here, uh, rushes up with her uh, curve blade and makes a double strike. She makes two attacks with one uh, action. Uh, 24 and 19 both hits. Uh, so she's going to do uh, just a measly 19 damage against it. Uh, it is still up, but only barely. Uh, actually, rather, it is bloodied, but only barely bloodied. Uh, Zachris. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't have any ranged. Uh, could I could I pick up an impro- uh, improvised weapon and throw it? Yeah, I'd say so. If you make a, okay. I'd call it a dexterity roll. Okay. Uh, let me attempt that, then. I'll, I'll pick up some trash. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll give it a 1d4. Uh, that no. critically misses. <laughs> uh, luckily, you don't hurt her, but you just throw, like, a can yeah. in the back of the soya. Yeah, uh, like a Gary Springer show. So, so it'll be one action to pick up the trash, because it's an uh, interact right. action. Yeah. Uh, last action, maybe take cover? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I'll just take cover. <laughs> uh, Grayson. Yep, I'm going to move up here, and I will cast Ray of Frost on it. Right, good luck. That hits. Ten cold damage is going to hurt it a lot. Uh, it, you see it's starting to freeze up a little bit as well. Um, that, was all of, that was all of them. Uh, LK. Um, LK will grab hold of his necklace, drain his bonded item, and cast Magic Missile once more. Uh, nice. I guess you can only get two actions from that, I think. Oh, yes, I can. That's right. Oh, it's a free action. Sorry. No, it is a free action. No, the drain bond, bonded items are free, so I get I can use all three. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, this is super annoying with the bonus action, or bonus damage, like, pop up as well. You're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, wow. Four, two, five. Uh, that is going to wreck it. Uh, spending one more, like, moment uh, just oozing everywhere around it. It uh, coats Soya with uh, its muck uh, before it uh, yeah. collapses down into the muck, becoming a hardened crust around itself. Sweet. Uh, Tsutsuya, uh rests for a second, puts her sword back in, and says, I think you and I will be good friends. Who's she talking to? Uh, all of you. Fair enough. Uh, hey, you would... please. You'd probably see LK tuck that ring that he just, uh, or at least when he took it out and it glowed and he drained that bond. I mean, you guys would see him tuck it away uh, and probably talk to it almost and say thank you. Uh, Tsutsuya only... Yeah. Actually, Tsutsuya doesn't get out. She does a little, uh... Ah. There we go. That's a little There bit. you go. <laughs> so that final description of it dying has given me the immersion that a garbage planet should have. <laughs> <laughs> I got that just, like, feeling on me right now. Like, <laughs> uh, so Tsutsuya is going to, um... sort of beckon you guys all closer and says, uh, I do not know how large the radius of a, a roamer this small would be but we should all stand close to get to the next plane um, I'm going to end the session okay. uh, with you guys going through the plane but uh, what you'd probably do is spend some time healing Zachris um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but uh, we'll assume that you do that between sessions um, I just want to describe uh, she sort of guides your hands, LK, as you twist the uh, top bits of this uh, lantern like a Rubik's Cube. And it uh, starts to glow and create this sort of illusion around you. Uh, much like the circle back in um, Fenrisel's, uh ritual, this sort of projects this image of a forest around you. Uh, a massive forest with like trees bigger than some mountains. Uh, there are thousands of birds around, and Sosoya sort of looks around and is like, good, I do not see her there. 
When you are ready to go, turn this last knob. Um, so LK would, I guess, look around at everybody, looking for a scent, uh, and then say, as Chauncey has told me, it's not always the size of your roamer that counts, but the way you use it, and he would twist it. Uh, Glob is like, oh, this, this feels weird. Oh, this is a weird vibration. Uh, uh-oh. And, uh, you guys, as he says, uh-oh, you guys feel yourself pulled, not in a direction, but, like, inside yourself. And that is where I will end tonight's session. Yay. Cool. Thank you. We lived. <laughs>